All right, you all ready for the roll call? Yes. Please, yes, please, Madam Clerk. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Mr. Brennan? Yes. Present. Mr. Rickman? Here. Mr. McDowell? Yes. Mr. Duvall? Present. Ms. Devine? Mr. Davis? Here. Mayor Benjamin? I'm, I am present, and um, Madam Clerk, Ms. Devine's going to be uh, logging in very soon. She had a court obligation, um, so we'll be, uh, she'll be checking in very soon. We'll uh, mark her present when she shows up in the call. Uh, yes, thank, you, thank, thank you. Um, uh, Red McDowell, you mind bringing us a word, brother? Yes. Eternal and creator God for all that you've done for us. For this day, for all of the hopeful possibilities you've allowed us to share in. We gather today as brothers and sisters shrouded in grace and mercy. We simply ask that you might be with us individually and collectively as we discuss and decide on issues for this city. Lord, we pray that the memory of John Lewis resonate within each of us and that the sensitivity that he gave to this nation of ours rise up among all of the obstacles. Deliver us from all that is evil and protect us. We ask it in your name. Amen. 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 Thank, thank you, uh, Rev, for recognizing the um, uh, the life of John Lewis. Obviously, this past week we lost John Lewis and C.T. Vivian, and uh, early this year Joseph Lowry, and and today we actually have a chance to celebrate as well the birthday of our Congressman, the eighth birthday of Jim Clapper. Uh, so we, we're 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 thankful for his years of service, and that he and um, Congressman Lewis served together for years, even long before uh, even one of them went to the Congress. So uh, happy birthday, uh, Jim Clapper. Happy birthday. Uh, Boss. Happy birthday. Amen. Amen. Um, is there a motion to adopt the agenda? Mr. Mayor, if I might. I'm oh, sorry, please. Please. Amendment amendment. Mm -hmm. please. Uh, we'll amend item number five, the Microsoft agreement to simply reflect a reduction in costs to $697,372.97. Okay, super. All right. With that um, amendment, um, is there a motion to adopt the agenda? Uh, comment. Please. Um, I, uh, I, I, I want to do, do this and for, for the record, and, uh, maybe it'll spark some ongoing discussions, but I've gone through, went through the agenda and, um, one of my concern is uh, African American and minority participation. I looked at all of these numbers and the, the totals, tried to figure out where the um, proteges were in, in a number of these uh, contracts. And it's, it's difficult to determine, number one. Um, and, and two, when I looked at the total I guess of the total, a number of them I just sort of not included. We're looking at somewhere around $62 million. And the concern is I can only identify two uh, protégés uh, and, a, and minorities. That would be J Dessa, Disa, and, and Chow. Um, you got Utilities. Um, uh -huh. them in here, Mr. Davis, but I don't disagree with your observation. As a matter of fact, I had a conversation earlier. Right. And so, um, and it's also when I look at some, a couple of the change orders, the change orders sort of bump the cost of these contracts up also. So if you look at a $60 million range, uh, I don't think we would be uh, on, on the mark with what we say we do. If you recall, 
I think earlier last year, there was a uh, packet that came before us that totaled about 50 million, uh, Madam City Manager. And then if you sort of pull that back to take a look at it with some strategies to meet those goals. And um, I, I look at one as an example only. Um, uh, uh, there's one totaling 1 million plus another uh, total plus reaching as high as 17 million so forth and so on. If we don't have minority, minority uh, participation in these contracts, um, I, we don't, I think we don't look good. Um, and my, my thought was to maybe pull these back so that we can get some clarity on, on participation. Also, a number of these contracts, again, based on the selection, uh, as I always say, when it's all over, um, a lot of dollars are going to be going down the interstate, leaving this city. And, and we, I want us to take, make a concerted effort to beef up our minority participation, African-Americans and, and uh, others of color. We we're the capital city and, and with that kind of money being spent, especially now where you have some of these programs, mostly you, the um, protégés are small businesses and they're struggling now. And we all know that there's a good chance that a number of those that are struggling now won't exist at the end of this pandemic. And I'm, I'm hoping that just as the others, the big boys are getting the opportunity to stay in the game, we need to figure out a way to get more uh, protégés involved. Um, and I think also you look at the question of whether or not we do in fact have small and minority businesses capable of doing some of this work. And if they're not, then that's one of the purposes of the protege program. So um, I may reluctantly support this packet, but uh, I, I do it with reservations because of my concerns. But I, I would like us to, Madam, to Mr. Madam to Mr. come Mr. back and see how we plan to address these concerns. Yes, sir. Mr. Davis, um, you know, I'm happy to go through each one of these projects with the council. I, I do want to reassure you because I think the, the staff on the call will probably be finding this conversation interesting because when we have a gender review, I spend an inordinate amount of time. I mean, I cannot tell you the depth that we go into on every single project. And of course, because of the length of time um, from our last council meeting, this is a pretty full agenda that I was hoping to take you all through at a steady pace, but it is a lot to it today. Many water and sewer projects that unfortunately, sir, you know, most of which do not need to be held up, but I certainly understand wanting to discuss any questions you have. I actually was proud of many of these projects because there are several that are protege only. And so I can assure you that the percentages for every single water and sewer project, except for one, um, have been met with the goal set of 20% participation. <laughs> and I guess I would need to have some clarity as to when you're saying they haven't been met, if you're meaning minorities of color, because right. I wouldn't want to be, I, I, I want to be clear for the public that we have goals, we meet them, there's a mentor protege program and the requirements of 20% for those mentor protege projects. I don't see one on here we haven't met that except for one and I can we can talk about that one with the East Rocky Branch and some capacity assurance issues that um, have me a bit concerned and so I had to make um, a decision with the staff about not meeting CDBE goals and um, 
some pricing concerns, et cetera, and timing issues, it's very urgent. But outside of that, I think we probably need to get into a discussion and be clear right. to the public on when you say we haven't met the goals. I, I don't think that's totally accurate. We met the goals, but if we are discussing availability of, um, of contractors of color specifically, is that your concern, Mr. That, that is that That is my concern. You know, we have the classifications in terms of um, minority, which is broad, but if, if you break that down, the question is, my question and the questions is out there is uh, minorities of color, African-Americans okay. as an example. Okay. Um, don't want to prolong this, but I, I think this uh, warrants some further discussion and we can, we can do that. And if I may be uh, leaning off the shelf and not on solid grounds and you can you can bring that to my attention also, but moving forward, we need to figure out a way to um, see, to be able to have some clarity so that you know, a person like myself uh, won't have to dig to have answer that question. Okay, and I think too that it's a bigger discussion with right. some of our um, opportunities for program program participation of um, through the Office of Business Opportunities and other economic development avenues to make sure that many of our um, contractors of color are having the opportunity to prepare themselves for the type of work and the, their availability to do the work on these particular projects. Again, we've, we're trying to figure out ways to break down some of these high dollar projects so that that opportunity may be there in different ways. Mm -hmm. But again, um, we, we did do protege led projects too on, there's several on this agenda as a matter of fact, which is a, which is a new novel approach as well. It comes down to the availability and the capacity. And I agree with you we've got to keep pushing the envelope on ways to um, improve upon that for our um, businesses of color in, in certain fields, particularly in the water and sewer industry. Just, just two final quick points and I'll let go. Um, when we look at these numbers, especially the bottom line, and, and this is just one group coming through, you know, about 60 some odd million dollars. That's the city's cash cow, if you want to put it like that. But also the question that would be, um, are the people that we're contracting with aware of that? And, and um, are they um, looking to those out of town, hire local? And also are they putting forth an honest effort to locate and give those groups that I'm concerned about an opportunity to participate in, in a contract. Well, I think you raise a great point and it's something the staff and I need to push, um, as you say, the big boys in Columbia um, who are competing um, and losing some projects to out of state contractors we've noticed. Right. Um, who may not have the uh, relationships with some of our smaller um, SMWBEs here, but it's the market. Um, there's a lot of SCDOT work going on right now that is um, maybe not making some of our local folks um, as interested or as competitive. So mm -hmm. I'm happy you raised the point because it's an opportunity for me publicly to say, step up. Right. Mm -hmm. Step up. And, and 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 you know we we just have so many small right. fragile yes businesses uh, in in this city and again fast forward to what their position is going to be when we all agree that the pandemic has passed we know that don't know what the numbers are but then that's nationwide the smaller ones are gonna they're gonna perish. If we don't have certain, um, uh, not not safety nets, but if we don't have, if we're not aggressive in making sure that you know they get what they need, the training opportunities to to compete, participate, and um, uh, 
financial assistance. Oh, I can't think of it. Mr. Okay. Mayor, I'll defer to you as to how you want to approach these items individually. Would, Obviously, there no, are no. I wouldn't. I wouldn't. I wouldn't suggest I'm happy that. to explain yeah. each and every yeah. one of them. Yeah. I don't. I don't think we need to do that today. Okay. But it's. I'm, I'm putting it out there because it is a. Um, an example. So we need to just we can dis discuss yeah, it. You're right. You're right. Off. <laughs> Sure, sure. Uh, no, absolutely. Well, um, given some of the realities, uh, obviously, we've been doing a lot in this space. Staff's been doing a deep dive. Obviously, economic reality is always playing into all of this. Um, that might be that might be maybe time for um, your committee uh, to meet Sam, spend some time in the space, seeing what exactly more we could be doing, and mm -hmm. um, and we can make that happen, Mr. McDowell. Well, I think I think Daniel had it. Go ahead, ahead Daniel. No, go I'm ahead. sorry. I didn't, have, I didn't have Daniel on my screen. I apologize. Go ahead, Daniel. Now, I was just going to say. I mean, we've had this conversation before, and, and I think we ought to put some time away because it is a challenge with some of the contractors to have graduated and take on. But at the same time, we think opportunity not. You're breaking. You're breaking. You're breaking up, Daniel. I don't. I don't see it on my side, but I hear somebody in the background. But um, um, you know, with all that's going on, we have challenges. But there's some a lot of opportunities, repair jobs, and other things that takes away the limits of insurance and bonding and the things that have been challenges from some folks that we could, that would be ongoing and will always be ongoing that we need to make sure we get. So I, I, I think we need to, to, to pull the subcommittee together and dig through it because there's a lot of opportunities. They all don't have to be big projects. There's lots right. of money spent every day in Columbia that will add up to big numbers at the end of the year, but there's opportunities for, for our local businesses, um, minority women, everything to be involved in our city yes i do think because there are challenges with the program and we've discussed it before but there are other i think we ought to pursue them and um i do think that's a, a, a in this case we, we should pull that committee together all right let's let's uh let's uh let's plan to have a committee meeting uh sooner rather than okay. later uh, mr mcdowell yes yeah, so just um miss wilson let me ask you this yes sir What's the role in terms of bringing this list, compiling this list of vendors? What is that list? How how does OBO play into that? So, and, and, uh, and and particularly with the urgent conversation, I think Mr. Davis is raising. How does is there any connectedness? related to those issues yes. if so Absolutely. yes can there, sir. Be, can there be some collaboration and some conversation and again i want to agree with sam and i want to say and i think i think daniel raises a real pivotal issue i think but i think it's necessary for us as we talk about african-american businesses and contractors it would certainly be good for us to have that clarifying conversation. So does OBO play a part of where we are in terms of clarification? Yes, sir. So we are, I, I do think the conversation to give you all a full picture in, in a committee setting, it sounds needed. Right. Procurement staff, the Office of Business Opportunity mm -hmm. staff, um, Clinch's whole team with Columbia Water, um, they're all involved together in most of these projects on the front end as far as deciding when a project is to be bid, what goals we set, what programs are applicable, like if it's mentor protege or subcontractor outreach, et cetera. And then of course we have the CDBE goals that Melissa and, and Melissa actually the Office of Business Opportunities actually initiates um, through a formula 
the availability of um, small minority women owned businesses. And it's, it's like a science. It's, they actually track who's available to participate and certain percentages are, are, um, are determined. And that is typically, I, in recent weeks, I can think of maybe one or two um, that I've had questions about when they've done those percentages. Um, Melissa and her team do that and it's sent to um, Assistant City Manager Sheely and Gentry and they review it and then it's sent to me for me to sign off on as far as permitting percentages and availability of, of contract or small minority women owned. I think the bigger discussion though that I'm hearing from Mr. Davis and you all is about capacity of um, of some of these contractors of color is and that's why again I'm, I'm being very specific when I say that because I don't want anyone to leave this conversation before we pass these agenda items thinking that there were no programs applied no goals met the 20 percent was met on almost every one of them except for maybe one and we can talk about that one um, and that was my call so Again, I think we have to be clear about the bigger picture of building capacity of minorities, particularly minorities of color in certain uh, disciplines and the industries that we impact through water and sewer mm. and the market. And so it's a bigger discussion I think we need to have, Ms. Reverend McDowell. But yes, to answer your question, all of those departments work together on every single one of these procurements, starting with Ms. Wright, who's the director of procurement, working with um, Clint and Melissa specifically, and Ms. C. And I mean, we all work on them. I mean, I, you know, we spend in a gender review, you know, more time than I would like us to, but it's because of these questions that I know you're going to ask. We probably spend on this agenda, we spent probably three hours going through it. Um, it is there's a lot of eyes on these things. Even with that said, I hear you and we need to keep well, trying to do even better. Well, the interest, yeah, no, thank you. In the interest of moving on, we're gonna move on. Yeah. Um, we let's let's uh, pull together the economic development community development committee. Uh, let's get a, a full briefing because I mean I, I see it in, in, in action the uh, uh, interdepartmental work that's that's happening or even our minority business advisory council is very involved that Melissa uh, through OBO manages uh, Clint is 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 in the house at each of those meetings so there's, there's a lot of integrated conversations happening and obviously it's just, this is a commitment uh, that we've all um, made uh, and we're gonna have to continue to work to build capacity uh, in that space, particularly in, in water sewer, where we spend um, uh, the vast majority of our contractual uh, resources, as uh, the city manager just mentioned. I do think uh, it's, it's probably a perfect time, obviously, for, for uh, Teresa, for everyone to get fully involved in understanding the entire process. Yes. Uh, and, and, and then, um, and as we, as we, we know people, um, um, trying to pull more people maybe into the process and, and uh, getting people uh, available um, and up to speed and maybe helping us meet some of those places where we have uh, uh, needs and uh, to build some some capacity uh, so let's I mean since, since we're having this discussion right now I think it's important that even the committee meeting uh, will be virtual maybe making that um, public as well for others just to get a full briefing as yes, to all sir. the things that we do in addition to the um, not just the um, um, small women or our own business DB MB space uh, I also um, obviously want to focus on the um, on the uh, on LB, the lo local 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 mm -hmm. and, and, and I mean, you remember I mean, ten years ago when we we talked about having a a local um, preference in terms of businesses. People thought it would be the end of the world, and it's been very good um, for our, for our local businesses. So let's um let's let's get and get that scheduled. Uh, yes, let's uh, plan to move forward. Okay. Um, uh, thanks for. Um, uh, Mr. Davis, Mr. McDonald, yeah. Mr. Rickman, and, and everyone else shares the same um, um, concerns as well. So let's get that committee uh, meeting set and uh, entertain a motion uh, to approve the consent agenda. I move we approve the consent agenda items three through 28. Is there a second? Sec second. All right. Any further discussion? Seeing none, uh, we will move the previous question. Clerk, call the roll. 
Mr. Vernon? Yes. Mr. Rickman? Aye. Mr. McDowell? Yes. Mr. Duvall? Aye. Mr. Vine? Mr. Davis? Aye. Mayor, ben Mayor Benjamin? Aye. And let's get that meeting set pretty soon, um, I'm city manager. I mean, yes, all, of our all of our discussions, universal discussions around equity and inclusion are important to all of us. So and, thank you. And I would add the disparity study, Mr. Mayor. The only other thing that I was going to say is something the staff and I have been looking at. So it'd be a perfect opportunity to, to raise that with you all as well. Add, add that to the agenda. Thank you. Um, I can, of order, Mayor. Did, did yeah. we uh, adopt minutes? Yes, sir. No, I was going to. We, we uh, thank you, Mr. Time. Davis, too, um, for keeping us uh, on on track with with that very important um, those observations, and we need to go back to approve the minutes. Of I, I forgot we were. I, I, I'm sorry. I thought we were. <laughs> yeah, I thought we were adopting the motion uh, yeah. to adopt the agenda. Yeah, that was a motion to adopt the agenda. I apologize. I thought we. Uh, I think the motion said uh, agenda, agenda items three through twenty eight. So we. Uh, I'm not sure exactly where we are. Uh, my, my, my parliamentarian with his, his beard over there is, uh, is uh, not keeping us uh, attached. Beagle, beagle. Yeah. Mm -hmm. beagle. Um, Erica, I, I thought they approved, they adopted the agenda with my amendment, correct? No, it, it, it was just, it was just 30, it was just uh, um, 30 minutes ago we started the convo, so. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> <laughs> let's let's get a bunch on of the promote. adoption of the agenda. That's just, uh, oh, motion, no, to, no, motion right. to approve the minutes? So move. Is there second. a second? This is uh, April, 20, April 21st and May 7th. Moving to second. Any discussion? Move to approve this question. Clerk, call the roll. Mr. Vernon? Yes. Mr. Rickman? Aye. Mr. McDowell? Yes. Mr. Duval? Aye. Mr. Vine? Mr. Davis? Aye. Mayor Rickman? And Aye. Erica, I think I'm hearing you say you need the adoption of the agenda. Yeah, we're still going to do that. We're going to get back to that. Yeah. We're gonna we're gonna we're gonna come back to that. Oh, we oh, we did we what did we just do? No, I took it as the motion was to adopt the agenda, and then we approved the minutes, and so now right, we well, can go well, into well, item two. Well, in, the, in the interest in okay. the interest of procedure, is there a motion to adopt the agenda? So move. Is there a second? Yeah. All right. Move the previous question. Kurt, call the roll. Mr. Vernon. Yes. Mr. Rickman. Aye. Mr. McDowell. Yes. Mr. Duvall? Aye. Mr. Davis? Aye. Mayor Benjamin? Aye. Thank y'all. And, and I, 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 I tease y'all about the time on, the, on that. That is an incredibly important issue, a uh, very important issue uh, raised, uh, Mr. Davis. And, and thanks, Ms. Ms. Wilson, um, for the answers. And we look forward to doing a deeper dive in the, uh, in the community meeting uh, when, yes. when, when, when the time comes. Uh, I think we have uh, Chief Tinsley um, uh, on the, to, um, uh, make a report on COVID-19. Uh, everyone sees where we are just since our, our, our last meeting. We've obviously eclipsed uh, 1,100 uh, deaths here in South Carolina, uh, over 71,000 confirmed uh, cases. Uh, I, again, I want to thank uh, our council and uh, Teresa and, and our incredible team here uh, at the city for our forward thinking uh, response. And I think it's informed by um, good public health uh, data and, and, and science, working to keep our people safe, everything from the masking ordinance, just the things that we're doing internally, and then we'll, talk, we'll probably talk about a few of those things uh, maybe um, uh, as well. But we got to keep leading from the front, and we got to get arms around the public health uh, crisis. If we do that, we'll get well, our, our economy will rebound, our children can go back to school, and we can start seeing some normalcy uh, with the uh, advent of a, of a vaccine sometime, hopefully in the not too distant future. But just again, thank you um, for um, all of your great work. I think um, uh, Teresa is, is Harry going to give a report now. Yes, sir. Hi, can y'all hear me? Yes, yeah, sure. Director uh, Harry Tinsley, okay. Emergency Management. Thank you. Good afternoon, Mayor, members of Council, Madam City Manager. Uh, thank you for your time. Uh, we want to give you a, a brief update on uh, the COVID. Uh, as, far, as far as we'll start with testing. And these numbers will change as of this afternoon with the new postings that, that will be done uh, by DHEC. But in South Carolina, there are over 638,000 total tests as of yesterday is reporting. Uh, 500, over 546,000 of those 
uh, were negative, uh, 91,000, uh, over 91,000 were positive. So currently right now, as of this hour, there are uh, 71,213 confirmed positive tests statewide. And uh, unfortunately, there are over 1,000, as the mayor said, over 1,147 confirmed deaths in our state due to COVID. Uh, as of the 15th of July, this reporting data is as of the 15th, hospital bed utilization capacity in the state was 72.69%. Um, that data is uh, changing as it's important to note. Um, the hospital is the current hospitalization data is not available right now as VX is transitioning, as I know most of you are aware, to a new teletracking system and new reporting process. We do expect that data to post soon, and we will make sure you get that um, as you may get it on your smart device at the same time. As far as Richland County, uh, currently there's 6,117 confirmed total positive cases, um, 119 uh, deaths, unfortunately, in our county. 109, excuse me, 109. And as far as City of Columbia, some preliminary data, and this is just preliminary at this point, uh, approximately 1,805 cases within the city limits uh, over the last 30 days. And it is estimated, and this is just a rough, rough, very preliminary estimate, that potentially 87% of those have recovered. Uh, there are still several hundred uh, that remain active. An important note on that data is that with the increase in testing and also the recent spikes that we're seeing in new cases, could mean that active number is higher uh, with the potential of more individuals being sick. We will continue to, to run that down and provide that data to you as we get it. Uh, as far as employee testing and uh, PPE, personal protective equipment, uh, currently uh, to date, 417 employees have been affected uh, either by quarantine, self-isolating, and or testing. Uh, 45 of those employees have tested positive for COVID-19. Um, the departments that are affected by staffing levels are 20 departments uh, to date currently. Our contracts and procurement department uh, has provided protective masks and PPE uh, sanitizing solutions and various products to uh, all departments. Our fulfillment center continues to process requests that are made uh, and has sufficient PPE stocks uh, on hand inventory. As far as our mask up, um, we have uh, four frontline departments that are currently serving as ambassadors, our code enforcement, our customer care, uh, parks and recreation, and parking services. All departments are reporting having good educational opportunities at this time with the general public and our customers. A high degree of compliance has also been observed, which is, uh, which is a very positive thing. Over six, 760 contacts have been made to date. Uh, as far as our citizen uh, distribution of protective masks that we did during the uh, two-week period from June 29 to July 10, uh, our Parks and Recreation staff uh, through four different locations over those two-week periods uh, distributed uh, 15,000, over 15,000 protective masks to our citizens. And those distribution locations were our Busby Center Community, our Busby Street Community Center, Hampton Park Neighborhood Center, Earlwood Community Center, and our South Edisto Neighborhood Center. And we had good, uh, good turnout on those uh, locations. As far as our mask ordinance reporting, uh, our fire marshals continue to educate uh, businesses and our uh, citizens on the importance of using masks uh, and the requirements of the ordinance. Um, they're seeing generally overall good compliance. Uh, they've had 93 visits to date. Um, there's over 87 contacts where educational materials were, were provided and were received uh, very well. Uh, just in those, uh, in the deputy fire marshal's interaction, they've also given out 180 individual masks uh, to our general public, uh, those folks that they see on a regular day-to-day -day basis as they engage in their duties. Uh, they have issued 10 warnings. Um, five citations have been issued to date. There have been no individual citations uh, at this point. As far as internally, some of the safety and risk assessments that are being done by our safety and risk management department, uh, 46 risk assessments of city facilities and departments have been completed. Uh, two external risk assessments have also been completed with our some external partners. Uh, these risk assessments, as I say, are ongoing. Uh, also, the Department of Safety and Risk Management and our Human Resources Department have composed um, 
and implemented a COVID-19 disinfectant and cleaning your living and work areas uh, video for all employees. That has been posted on our inner city under our safety tab. Uh, and that's, that's, I encourage you all to go look at that. There's some good information contained in that. Uh, as far as our support services department, uh, our um, city facilities mitigations and modifications, um, they're continuing to ensure that our, that our facilities are cleaned on a daily basis. Um, 178 preventive cleanings have also been conducted in addition to that. Uh, they've constructed over 100 protective barriers. These are the sneeze guards and things that are needed to, as we transition back in to make sure that we're uh, protecting as, as best we can. And they installed over 230 signs at this point. Uh, social distancing mitigations uh, have also been implemented at our Wash Square. It's 1136 Washington Street to include all elevators uh, to make sure that we're uh, maintaining social distancing as we go forward. Uh, in closing, uh, departments continue to clean facilities, offices, uh, their, their workspaces, those highly touched areas. And our safety and risk uh, management folks are out there. Uh, they continue to provide guidance um, as, as is much needed and uh, monitor you know, those operations to ensure effective sanitizing and disinfecting. They do that on a frequent basis. And our uh, public and media relations folks continue to push out information across all media platforms, highlighting our resilient Columbia campaign, our pledge, mask up, COVID-19, uh, and, and the CS response to including testing locations and other important information. So we wanted to provide you just a quick uh, brief snapshot of where we are. Uh, additional information will be in the city manager briefing note. Uh, pending any questions, that concludes my report. Thank you. No, no, it was a great report, and and uh, obviously some some of that data, obviously uh, I, I saw in your most recent communique, maybe uh, uh, earlier today or yesterday, I forget when it was, um, Harry. Uh, but could you? Uh, I know it's I've, I've got some of that from a few different places, some from the city manager, some from um, uh, Kay Hampton and Melissa, and and and, um, and also uh, uh, economic development. Could you put all that in one place? Because uh, I'd, I'd like it for uh, us, the seven of us, to be able to push that out uh, to the communities and our, our various lists as well. I think it, it would be personally edifying and encouraging uh, the folks who see the, the comprehensive nature uh, uh, and the thoughtful nature that the city has uh, approached. Um, so as, as much as you can put in one place, easy to consume, uh, would, would, be, would be great. And, and let's figure out how we can, how we can push it out. Uh, best, uh, Teresa. Um, some people, you'd be made. Some people need it, need it in, in, you know, in um, 100 plus characters or less on Twitter. But other folks actually still do like to read uh, and, and and want a chance to do that. I see Mr. Duval is taking his his meeting in Hall Steakhouse, so he's wearing his mask uh, as we as we as we speak, um, uh, uh, doing his job. But but let but let's let's definitely do that. And um, uh, uh, Director Tinsley touched on it. Uh, I really also want to kind of touch on the great work that just various departments just falling in some of these great philanthropic efforts we have going on, working to build uh, intersectoral uh, partnerships. Uh, it, uh, our, our folks are really stepping up in so many different ways, mm -hmm. serving on national committees and, um, and, and partnerships. Uh, I, I got to give um, um, everyone a shout out, but I really want to uh, really give Kay Hampton a real, a real um, uh, at, I can't say at a boy, at a girl as, as mm -hmm. well, at a woman, uh, but but some of the work around around testing uh, and just really leveraging uh, the great work that the DHEC has been doing, uh, DHEC, yeah. uh, but, but leveraging his partnerships at NUSC and and uh, Prisma and everyone else. Uh, just a few weeks ago, we had the largest testing event in the state, um, over, um, based over at Benedict College. Uh, a whole lot of folks came together. Uh, via Prisma, we tested over 2,000 uh, folks over, over over two days. Uh, just this past week, uh, again another partnership that we that we that we pulled together in USC and uh, Fort Jackson, uh, working with General Beagle. Uh, the K ran the point on. I think they tested over 800 folks there. Uh, but but this is this is a time when everyone comes together. If it's Kroger Health or Walmart or what, what have you, everyone's just kind of making it happen and and, um, and and some of these things you can measure very easily some you cannot measure very easily but you know that they're going towards a common good and and I, and I I'd be remiss if I didn't say thank you to the people of Columbia uh, for the incredible support of, of our efforts around around masking and, and, and mask up uh, Columbia SC 
uh, the, com the community. Our citizens have stepped up. And um, uh, if, in fact, we continue to show the, the, the persistence and resilience necessary, we can, we can, we can, we can beat this thing. Uh, but it's going to require all of us to work together. But uh, let, let's see, if, Teresa, Harry, y'all work together. Just as much of that as, 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 as you think, believe me, I think people want to see what's happening. And, and that, that is as comprehensive as a report, a report as you're going to get uh, in any city in the country. Um, so we, I want to make sure it's out there and, and available to people and make sure we can push it out to our various constituencies. All right. oh, yes, sir. Most of it's in that well, note, but we can make sure it's sure. all for public consumption and push yeah, exactly. and start publicizing exactly. it, sir. Yes, sir. Exactly. I'm even thinking about the way we used to, uh, when we had the flood, you know, we, we, we had an internal document. Let's make it a public document and just put all this information out there. Will okay? do. All right. Thank, thank you very much. So thank, thank you, um, Harry, um, for all your work. Yes, sir. I, I think Mr. Thank Rickman, I'm not sure if, if Mr. Rickman's screen is showing, Mr. Mayor, for you. I, I see. I can, I can see Daniel. Okay. I can, I can see him. Um, all right. Uh, where was the agenda? Uh, the consent agenda? I, did you have a, did, he, did you have a comment, Mr. Rickman? Did I? Oh, no, I thought I'm, your hand was raised. No, ma'am. I'm sorry. Okay. All right. I think we've. I think uh, we're gonna we're gonna approve the consent agenda for the third time, real quick. Just just <laughs> just as a, <laughs> this as a, just in case. Okay. Yes, I want to call. I want to call from Teresa Teresa Knox uh, in a few months, and we didn't do it right. So, is there a motion to approve the consent agenda? So moved. Is there a second? Uh, I think Mr. Duval second, but he's on mute, so I'll, I'll second that. Uh, we'll, um, we'll move the previous question. Call, call the roll. Mr. Brennan. Yes. Mr. Rickerman. Aye. Mr. McDowell. Yes. Mr. Duval. Aye. Mr. Davis. Aye. Mayor Benjamin. Aye. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you, everyone. This item is three through twenty-eight. All right, uh, Madam City Manager. Yes, sir. Ordinances second reading, item twenty-nine, ordinance number two thousand twenty zero five seven, authorizing the city manager to execute an agreement regarding the use of the city of Columbia and Capital LLC, the multi-use entertainment facility in the Bull Street development. Their motion. I move approval of item twenty-nine. Yeah, a second. Discussion. All right. Mr. We, Mr. Rickman. We were supposed to get some information on that. Now we'll see by what additional information, Mr. Rickman. I know that Ms. Gentry we shared um, most of what I thought you needed. I don't, if we missed something, then please let me know. I mean, I thought we were getting a list of what it was going to be used for. I mean, there are no they were a recipient of PPP, what the money's being used for. And I wanted to make sure that we had in place, you know, we are covered that these expenses come in the future that we're not responsible. Yeah, you know, this is our money that we put into that fund. It's not this money. So, Ms. Wilson, I can give an overview again of the conversation from the first reading. Um, these expenses will be used to cover the ongoing operation at Segra Park, such as the utility bills, which are fairly high and a building of this magnitude, you can't just turn it off and shut it down and walk away for a few months. You have to keep the HVAC going. There's electricity costs that are pretty high in comparison with your normal size building. Um, the grass maintenance, you have to continue um, maintaining the, the field and operating that um, while they have certainly scaled back operations they're doing everything they can to save as much as possible but they have to also think about the long-term maintenance of the facility um, so these funds will be used for those type of activities they will not use them if not needed they will give us invoices for any expenses that they're requesting access to the capital replacement or cap capital fund is what we call it and these funds are restricted to the Segra Park. The, these funds are not available for the city to use elsewhere. They were made up of um, 
a variety of sources to include the naming rights portion of the city's um, naming rights agreement and those funds automatically go into this account um, made up of some attendance numbers when you exceed a certain number of attendance. Um, Hardball puts money into this fund. So, so again, I want to reiterate, these funds are not available for the city to use otherwise. And, and this, um, we and, also, yes, sir, go ahead. And Missy, no, and Missy, and again, and while this is not uh, anticipated, like so much is not anticipated during the pandemic, this is in the spirit of maintaining uh, um, uh, that facility. So um, I, I, I understand um, Mr. Rickman's le legitimate questions and, and, and concerns, but um, I'm just, I got I'm a just, question, Mayor. Um, okay, 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 please, Daniel, then, then, then we'll. No, I just, uh, you know, I, I just think we need to, to make mm -hmm. sure that we understand what we're committed to and that understand that, you know, it's going to be a recovery all over the city, including the city finances. And, you know, this is not a for service. And so any of the funds that we've got to come up with, make up for this, takes away from a basic service. And I just want that on the record. Yeah, thank you. Thank you very much, um, Mr. Rickman. Mr. Brennan? Yeah, so uh, I guess to expand on Councilman Rickman's comment, uh, obligation-wise, are we as a city meeting our obligations that we agreed to when this draft was formed? And the money they're asking for, that falls in what they committed for their obligations for operations. Does that, does that make sense? I think Missy can answer that. So the intent of the agreement, and this goes back to the capital, city capital fund was set up as part of the venue license agreement. It was always intended that funds would be set aside into an account to be used for the maintenance of the facility um, with the understanding that the ongoing utility bills would not fall into that category during normal operations. Obviously, with the pandemic, um, everything's changed in the world. and and their ability with the loss of the 2020 baseball season, their ability to generate revenue that covers those monthly expenses has just been handicapped. They, they are doing everything they can to return some activity to the facility. We, these funds that they're asking to access will not be used to support any of those activities. For instance, they're doing restaurant nights. On, I believe, Saturday nights, you can sign up and go enjoy a meal and um, watch a program. I think they've shown baseball games and other such things. So you can do that. They're not using these funds to support those activities. But they are needing funds to just keep the basic operations going. They will replenish those funds, whether it be in lump sum amounts or at the time maintenance is needed on the facility. If, if this fund is not replenished and there's not funds available in the amount they've taken out of it, they are responsible for replenishing that and and they're committed to doing so. Um, what's the what's the time frame for that repayment? Is it it's over the term of the agreement. Obviously it's unknown when their normal seasons will resume. Ninety percent of their revenue is generated from baseball. So while we love the fact that they have three hundred plus events there every single year 90% of their revenue is generated from baseball games. If baseball does not return as normal during the 21 season, obviously their position is still more difficult than during normal operations. Even if it does return, there's likely going to be changes to how many people they can have in attendance, and you know, there's likely going to be changes from normal operations. So they're looking at have to make adjustments. Obviously, Major League Baseball is going to lead a large part of that conversation because they're at the mercy of Minor League Baseball. So they're certainly doing everything they can. I, I want to again state these funds are not available to the city to use anywhere other than on Sacred Park. The city does have to concur with how they use these maintenance funds. They, so they can't use them outside of the city agreeing to it but they're only intended to be used for the maintenance of the facility. They, we are using them earlier than originally intended. Had the pandemic, pandemic not happened, um, the, the funding would certainly sit there and continue to um, increase. 
So they're going to return the funds. It is over the term of the agreement. There's no way to predict that in two years they can return everything they're taking out because we don't know what we don't know what six months looks like. And right. we're all in that situation, not just the baseball team. And Missy, and the, during the first season, wasn't there wasn't the amount that accrued higher than what was anticipated paid by Hardball into the? It, they, they had a few good seasons. Obviously, when Tim Tebow was here, um, attendance was at record level. So certainly there were some funds. Um, there were revenue generated for this fund that was higher than what had been projected originally. So yes, ma'am, there, there were certainly some higher than projected years um, as far as building the fund up. But that's a good thing. We, we all intend, um, city and hardball included, intend for this fund to continue to build up. So when the roof needs to be replaced, this is where funding fits for that. So there's been a few occasions when um, maintenance has been performed using this fund. And I know Gregory just walked in here, so he can tell me what the, I believe we did some concourse work when we treated the concourse the year two or prior to season two. The boxy coating on the concourse. Right. On that. Really what we're doing is more, I'll call them capital improvements to the stadium. But again, the fund was established to keep the venue relevant, always relevant, always uh, clean and bright and new. This is an unanticipated use that will be replenished by um, hardball, uh, but certainly consistent again with the spirit of, 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 the, uh, of the agreement. Um, I'm gonna, um, unless there's some additional questions, Mr. Brennan, you got Just one, last one, one last question, Mr. Mayor. Uh, see, who has final say the city uh, when they do submit the receipts uh, up to 50,000 as to what what is acceptable for reimbursement? So Gregory Tucker's our primary liaison with anything Bull Street related. So they will originate with Gregory. They will go through finance to get the checks cut. So there will be checks and balances. But again, they have to have receipts that demonstrate actual expenses before we're going to cut a check. Great. Thank you all so much. Move the previous question. Clerk, call the roll. Mr. Brennan? Yes. Mr. Rickerman? No. Mr. McDowell? Yes. Mr. Duvall? Aye. Mr. Davis? Aye. Mayor Benjamin? Aye, thank you. Mm -hmm. All right, we got, we got um, a pretty rigorous uh, list of ordinances and, and resolutions. And then we got some, um, uh, not only the public hearing, but also some um, citizens who want to do public input. So let's, let's endeavor to work our way through this. Uh, we, and we also have, a, obviously, an executive session agenda we'll take on after um, some of we hear from some of our citizens. But let's see if we can work our way through this in a, in a very thoughtful, orderly, and concise manner, y'all. All right? All right, Madam Thank City Manager. You. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Item 30 of uh, your first ordinance, first reading, ordinance number 2020-049, granting an encroachment to 401 Hayward Street, LLC, for the use of the right-of-way area of the 400 and 500 blocks of Hayward Street. Your motion? A move approval. Is, is, is there a second? Second. Uh, <laughs> who got the who got the motion? I, I, I kind of howled as the as the as the, uh, the movement. Uh, yeah, so second. That's what he said, Mr. Davis. All right, and all right second, Duvall. Mr. Davis. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I want to move expeditiously. We can't move a second to say anything. Thank you, Howard. You're awesome. All right. Uh, uh, move the previous question, of Kurt Carroll. Mr. Vernon. Yes. Mr. Rickerman. Aye. Mr. McDowell. Yes. Mr. Duvall. Aye. Mr. Davis? Aye. Mayor Benjamin? Aye. Item 31, ordinance number 2020-051, granting an encroachment to South Carolina Automobile Dealers Association for the use of the right-of-way area of the 1400 block of Pulaski Street for the installation and maintenance of a Fair brick motion. wall. Ms. Wilson? Yes, sir? Could you talk a little bit more about that, that particular item number 31? I yes, sir. I probably have to defer to either legal or I'm not sure if Clint may be familiar with the encroachment or Robert. Anyone on? They, I, they want to all talk at once. Help me out. Okay, 
looks like what well, just looks it looks like uh, Ed like they they've been trying to build and maintain a, a brick wall, uh, but it extends into the city's right of way, um, and obviously that requires action um, by us uh, to approve that. We only only we can um, indeed approve that. I'm trying to get my sense of exactly where 1401 Pulaski is. I'm trying to figure out uh, where yeah. Pulaski is. Is yeah. that is that is that in the vicinity where the where the building is being constructed over there? It is uh it is behind um um uh I guess of course you know the, the building is back on back off Hampton Street, uh just off the of Huge and um kind of a let's see this is Pulaski in Hampton, uh, Pulaski and Hampton. So if you're coming up the hill, heading towards the library in the back of the police department, the building is right there at the corner of, uh, of Hampton and Pulaski. Um, so I assume it's it's, it's somewhere um, it, around there. Not around any residents. I didn't, I didn't get any, any questions of staff during our review, Reverend McDowell, so I, but usually that means it's pretty routine, but we can hold it until I get a better answer for you. Well, yeah, the, the Mayor, there's a description of it in our backup material. It's a it's a concrete sidewall five feet in width and 145 feet long with landscaping and irrigation. And it's got a, a personal injury uh, general liability insurance on it of $600,000. Well, that was that was a concern that I had whether or not there was some there are some insurability issues. Yeah, um, it, it's got a, they're requiring a $600,000 personal injury property damage, naming right. the city as the insured. Okay, I'm fine. That'll do. Move adoption. That'll do for me. All right, thank you. Uh, is there a second? Second, move the previous question, Kirk Pallero. Mr. Brennan? Uh, yes. Mr. Rickman? Aye. Mr. McDowell? Yes. Mr. Duvall? Aye. Mr. David? Aye. Mayor Benjamin? Aye. Item 32, ordinance number 2020-069, granting MCI Metro Access Transmission Services Court its successors and assigns the right power and authority to construct, install, maintain, and operate in, over, upon, and under the streets and public places of the city of Columbia, it's lying. So moved. Is there a second? A second. Is there a discussion? Say none. Uh, we'll move the previous question, Clark Colorado. Mr. Brennan? Yes. Mr. Rickerman? Aye. Mr. McDowell? Yes. Mr. Duvall? Aye. Mr. Davis? Aye. Mayor Benjamin? Aye. Moving into a period of resolutions, item 33, resolution number R2020-067, authorizing the city manager to execute an intergovernmental agreement between the city of, the, of Columbia and the Columbia Housing Authority for environmental studies. Um, I did wanna add mayor and council that I've asked a lot of questions about this item. Um, it is a HUD requirement that um, the city serve in this capacity and um, essentially be on the record with the environmental studies occurring that the housing authority has to conduct for Allen Benedict Court um, mm -hmm. to move forward. And so we, right. this allows us to still dig into a couple of things, but um, just wanted to bring that to your attention. Super, is there a motion? So move, Mr. Chair. All right, is there, is there a second? Second. All right, any discussion? Is uh, it, Mr. Is this, Mr. Rickman? Is this just a pass through? Uh, I, 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 yes, sir. It's their responsibility, the housing authority, but because of HUD's involvement, they it's, a HUD, it's a HUD requirement that requires that we right. they come to us. They almost consider us a responsible party, but I just wanted you to take that language they, they, responsible party they, they, lightly. They're responsible for it. Yeah. And I think Daniel's asking who's responsible for the bill. They have to pay. It, it, it's their bill. Not, not, not yes. Yeah. yes it is. All right. Move the previous question, Clark Colorado. Mr. Brennan? Yes. Mr. Rickerman? Aye. Mr. McDowell? Yes. Mr. Duvall? Aye. Mr. Davis? Aye. Mayor Benjamin? Aye. 
Item 34, resolution number R2020-069, authorizing the purchase of a 0.21 acre alleyway located on the southern side of Blossom Street in Richland County. Can't Move approval. Do a second. Second. I move the previous question, Kirk Cotterell. Mr. Brennan? Yes. Mr. Rickman? Aye. Mr. McDowell? Yes. Mr. Duval? Aye. Mr. Davis? Aye. Mayor Benjamin? Aye, thank you. Item 35, resolu and items, I would say Mayor and Council, items 35, 36, and 37, and 38 are your annual agreements that you approve regarding uh, homeless services. Item 35, resolution number R2020-079, authorizing this. So Daniel, we'll take all four together? Is that is that is that okay? Yes. Yes, sir. Okay. I love, I love, I love you guys. I'm talking to Teresa Wilson, Teresa Knox, and, and the clerk. But yeah, okay. <laughs> Let's take all four of them together. Um, that, that's a motion by Mr. Duval. Uh, is there yes. a second? Second. All right, with the previous question, call, call the roll. Mr. Brennan. Yes. Mr. Rickman. Aye. Mr. McDowell. Yes. Mr. Duval, aye. Mr. Davis, aye. Mayor Benjamin, aye. Thank you. Item thirty-nine, resolution number R two thousand twenty zero seven five, authorizing the city manager to execute a sixth lease amendment between the City of Columbia and First Citizens Bank and Trust Company for lease of approximately thirteen thousand six hundred and forty-seven square feet. Oh, so moved. Is there a second? Second. All right, Mr. Rickman. Uh, I, I just for clarification, I thought we were moving completely out of that building. Yes, sir. I was about to say, but y'all are going so expeditiously for me that I was happy to say this will be our last lease amendment um, for the facility. We needed to just um, unwind that final piece to get um, Harry and those out of the basement and to also allow the congressman to go direct from now on with First Citizens. But this so the third all uh, Tinsley's? Yes, sir. So yeah, all, all the basement, yeah. Yes, sir. All right. Um, mm -hmm. Move the previous question, Clerk Colorado. Mr. Brennan? Yes. Mr. Rickman? Aye. Mr. McDowell? Yes. Mr. Duval? Aye. Mr. Davis? Aye. Mayor Benjamin? Aye. At this time, we will, um, Mr. Mayor, ask that you all open a public hearing and first reading for zoning and planning matters as outlined, starting with um, item 40, Mr. Mayor. And I want to say, Mayor Benjamin, items 40, 41. Erica, help me out all the way through which item involved what? The first four items. First 40 through, yes, ma'am, 40 through 43. Okay. All right. I'm gonna well, I'm I'm go get me some coffee. Uh, uh, you, you gotta tell me how if, uh, efficiently Mr. McDowell runs a meeting. On the <laughs> get that out here. Hurry up and get oh, your yeah. coffee. <laughs> Miss right. Hampton, are you online with us? Who's that? I was asking. Hi. Hello. Uh, I am. Can you hear me? Yes, ma'am. My problem is, is I'm unable to share my screen right now. So I'm hopeful I've got backups who can share their screens, either John or Rachel. Uh, if, I got you. Okay. This is Rachel. We both had you, but Rachel, go ahead. Thank you, John and Rachel and Krista. <laughs> All right. Wait. Hold on one second. No. All right. All right. Can you all see that? Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, I, I will start off and they can pick up if, if this doesn't if this doesn't come through. But your first item is an annexation and a comprehensive plan map amendment at 156 Island View Circle. A request to annex is signed a land use classification of UER2 and QDR. All right. 
Are there questions? We're gonna take these one by one, Ms. Wilson. Yes, sir, Ms. Reverend McDowell. Oh, right. sorry, hold on. Yes, sir, can you hear me, Reverend McDowell? Yes, ma'am. Okay. And uh, Reverend McDowell, this is a zoning public hearing. Um, we would ask that if if the caller is calling, is on the line in public input, right. you have about 30 callers on the line and it's only one person that we're not sure if they're calling in for this item. So I'd like the opportunity to check in with that caller to see if they have remarks about this item. All right, would you check in? Yes, sir, thank you. Did she say we had 30 people waiting to talk? No, sir, just some of them are listening, but we do have a caller that we've added to the line, phone number ending in 7234, and we'd like to know if you're calling to comment about the annexation comp plan map amendment for 156 Island View Circle. Erica, when you identify that caller, do you ask them if they are interested in saying something about that annexation? Yes, sir. and right now we have the caller muted because they're receiving a lot of um, background noise. So we'd ask that caller if they can hear me to mute any sound they have in the background. And as soon as they do that, we will add them to the meeting. All right, let's hear it. Uh, hello, I'm not um, calling consent annexation. I'm ca calling um, pertaining um, to the Richmond County um, Black Collective, which sent an email over to the city council and to the mayor um, regarding okay. the potential police reform proposal. Yes? Is this pertaining to oh. the... Sir, this, is this pertaining to the annexation question relative to the annexation? As I said earlier, it's not. Uh, I was calling pertaining to a a uh, message that was sent by the Richmond County Black Collective on um, presenting a police reform bill at a potential meeting with City Council with Mayor Benjamin. Okay, Mr. McDowell, if, we, if you may, um, sir, if you could end, we're going to end your speaking session when it's time for public input. You, you can, can press star three and rejoin the speaker queue at that time. Sounds good to me. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. There are no other callers is there, for this is item. There anyone is there anyone in the queue that um, wants to speak to this particular annexation? No, sir. All right. Are there any other questions? I move adoption of item 40. All right. Is there a second? Second. It's been moved and seconded that the uh, proposed annexation of 156 Island View be adopted. Uh, are we ready to vote, um, Miss uh, Miss Erica? Yes, sir. Mr. Brennan. Yes. Mr. Rickerman. Aye. Mr. McDowell. Yes. Mr. Duvall. Aye. Mr. Davis. Aye. Mayor Benjamin. Thank you. Okay, Krista. All right, ready for the next item is an annexation comprehensive plan map amendment and zoning map amendment for 1.7 acres on County Line Trail. It is a request to annex assign the land use classification of UER2 and to zone a zoning of D1. All right. Erica, are there, are there persons that there in the queue that uh, would like to speak to that? No, sir, not at this time. I so, go ahead, Daniel. Go ahead, Daniel. Approval. Is there a second? Second. Are we ready to vote? Ms. Erica? Mr. Vernon? Yes. Mr. Rickerman? Aye. Mr. McDowell? Yes. Mr. Uh, Duvall? Aye. Mr. Davis? Aye. 
Ms. Devon? Aye. Thank you. 42 is an annexation comprehensive plan map amendment and zoning map amendment for 18.02 acres on county line trail. This is a request to annex assign a land use classification of UER1 and the zoning classification of PUDR. All right. Ms. Erica, is there, are there persons in line to speak to this particular annexation? No, sir, no additional callers have joined the queue. All right. I still move for approval. Is there a second? Second. Been moved and seconded. Uh, Ms. Erica, would you call the roll, please? Yes, sir. Mr. Brennan? Yes. Mr. Rickman? Aye. Mr. McDowell? Yes. Mr. Duvall? Aye. Mr. Vaughn? Aye. Mr. Davis? Aye. 43 is an annexation comprehensive plan map amendment and zoning map amendment for 20.74 acres on county line trail. A request to annex assigned a land use classification of UER1 and a zoning classification of PUDR. All right. Ms. Erica, are there persons in the queue to uh, have questions relative to this annexation? No, sir. All right. You've been moved. Second. Is there, is there a second? Second. second. All right. Thank you very much. Um, Madam Clerk, if you would call the roll. Mr. Brennan? Yes. Mr. Rickerman? Aye. Mr. McDowell? Yes. Mr. Duval? Aye. Mr. Vine? Aye. Mr. Davis? Aye. Thank you all for your patience. Number 44 is an annexation comprehensive plan map amendment and zoning map amendment at 2125 Apple Valley Road, request to annex and assign a land use classification of UER2 and a zoning of RG1. Um, I'm, I'm back, Mr. McDowell. Thank you, um, sir. It's good to see the city is still standing. I never had, never, had these, never had these concerns when Mr. Vine was there. <laughs> You know, but, uh, it's, it's, <laughs> um, is anyone uh, is it, is anyone here to speak in uh, favor of or oppose this um, um, item? Mr. Mayor, I know this is probably a little different, um, but I would I don't I don't know if Chief and those are in the position to speak to it right now. I do think there there are some challenges in this area. As what? recent as right now, <laughs> there there are there's a pursuit. Why don't, why, don't, why don't we hold that item? Why don't we hold that item? Defer the item to another another meeting. Okay. That'd be great. Thank you. All right, we're gonna hold item forty four. All right, item uh, forty five. Sounds good. All right, number forty five is an annexation comprehensive plan map amendment and zoning map amendment at four five two one Broad River Road. A request to annex assign a land use classification of AC2 and a zoning of M1. All right. Is there um, anyone speaking in favor of or against this or any other uh, issues uh, raised, Madam um, City Manager? Madam Clerk, anyone online? Uh, we'd like to remind callers that if they would like to speak on any of the zoning items, to press star three when your item is called. But at this time, Mayor, no additional callers are on the line. Is there a motion? So moved. Is there a second? Second. I move the quick discussion. Clerk, call the roll. Mr. Brennan? Yes. Mr. Rickerman? Aye. Mr. McDowell? Yes. Mr. Duvall? Aye. Mr. Vine? Aye. Mr. Davis? Aye. Mayor Benjamin? Aye. Thank you. Um, 46. Annexation Comprehensive Plan Map Amendment and Zoning Map Amendment at 120 Metal Park Drive. Request to annex, assign a land use classification of industrial and IND and a zoning of light industrial, that's M1. All right, is anyone here, um, anyone signed up to speak in favor of or against this or any other issues need to be raised, Madam City Manager? If not, uh, Madam Clerk, then um, we'll uh, entertain a motion. 
Move for approval. Second. 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 Move Second. Any discussion with the previous question, Court call roll. Mr. Brennan. Yes. Mr. Rickerman. Aye. Mr. McDowell. Yes. Mr. Duvall. Aye. Mr. Vine. Aye. Mr. Davis. Aye. Mayor Benjamin. Aye. And I do want to encourage folks who are um, holding on the line who want to talk public safety and law enforcement issues. Uh, we have just a handful of other items, and including some uh, commission appointments, and we'll be uh, we'll be up pretty quickly. Uh, so um, be patient. We'll be with you very shortly. All right, um, Madam Clerk. Member um, forty. Uh, um, Madam, <laughs> Madam Planning Director. I apologize. <laughs> That's quite all right. Item number forty-seven is an annexation comprehensive plan map amendment and zoning map amendment for eight ten Sparkle Bear Lane. A request to annex and assign a land use classification of A C three, and a zoning classification of C three. Is anyone here to speak in favor of or against this item? Anyone online, Madam Madam Clerk? All right. Well, good Nothing. deal. Um, is there a motion? Move. Right. Move. Move by Mr. Rickman. Is there a second? Second. All right, second, Mr. Duval, and discussion, saying none, we'll move the previous question, the third call roll. Mr. Brennan? Yes. Mr. Rickerman? Aye. Mr. McDowell? Yes. Mr. Duval? Aye. Mr. Vine? Aye. Mr. Davis? Aye. Mayor Benjamin? Aye. Thank you. This item is a zoning map amendment. It is on, it's for the, to change a Wheeler Hill PUD. It's obviously a number of addresses on Henderson Street, Rice, Calway Alley, the north side of Phelps Street, Pickens and Catawba. This is a request to rezone the parcels from PUDR to general residential to facilitate redevelopment into residential. This, this project will also require the review and approval of the planning commission of the site plan if the rezoning is approved. All right. Uh, is there anyone to speak in favor of or against this item? And again, there may be people on the line who wish to speak about this one. Um, and we do ask that they go ahead and raise their hand with that star three. Mm -hmm. All right. Do you have anyone, Madam Clerk? No, sir. Everyone who is in the speaker queue is waiting to speak there in public input at this time. Super. All right. Um, all right. So none. The motion is a motion for approval. I move right. approval. Is there a second? Sorry. All right. Moving second. Uh, discussion. Uh, seeing none. I move the previous question. Clerk, call roll. Mr. Brennan. Yes. Mr. Rickman. Aye. Mr. McDowell. Yes. Mr. Duvall. Aye. Mr. Vine. Aye. Mr. Davis. Uh, aye. Mayor Benjamin. Aye. Thank you. Number 49 is a zoning map amendment at 3209 North Beltline Boulevard. It's a request to rezone the parcel from single family residential RS2 to C1. All right. Is there anyone here to speak in favor of or against this? Madam Clerk, anyone? Um, no, if not, is there I've a motion? Got a, I've got a question. I'm sorry, please, Mr. Mr. Duval. Uh, I noticed that this the staff was recommending recommended denial of this and it passed four to two. Uh, is this the same situation we had on the next corner down on uh, Beltline and Two Notch where the encroachment into the neighborhood is the problem? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And so as is been the case for many years, um, that's been a policy of council, but oftentimes you know, there's there's instances where council has found it um, to be that advantageous to go ahead and rezone the parcels. All right. We, we heard uh, we did not hear any concerns from the neighborhood. I move approval. Mr. Mayor. And... Oh, no, please, please. Teresa. I was just going to. I just had a question quick, just quickly, Krista, I mean, it's so the 
I understand that we didn't hear anything from the neighborhood. Do we know what's being proposed on that, that parcel? Yes, it would be an office um, for a security company. So, and obviously when you rezone it to that zoning classification, it won't be anything within that zoning classification. Um, but this is just proposed for an office at this time. Okay. Right. That, Krista, that office borders on what neighborhood again? That's North Beltline. Sorry, that's North Beltline. Okay. Krista, did you hear Mr. McDowell's question? Yeah, I, I, um, I can look it up quickly. Um, it's taxing my ability to know right off the top of my head, but we certainly can look that up. Okay, let's give it, let's give it, let's give it one quick second. Yeah, this is, this is, on, yeah, this is on the other side of Two Notch, Ed. Um, um, this is uh, across Two Notch from the McDonald's. So this would be going towards, uh, if I'm correct, uh, towards uh, to the uh, left, to, to the left. Towards, towards Josh Lorick's church. All right. Yes. Between. Okay. Um, Thank you. Thank you. It is Rochelle Heights and Victory Garden. Yeah, I know where you are now. Okay. All right. Wait, you comfortable? Not really. But I know <laughs> I know where you are now. <laughs> I know where you are now. <laughs> we have a we have a, we have a, we, have a, we have a motion that, that still needs a second if there will be one. Second. Second. All right. All right. Um moving probably second. If there's more discussion needs to be had, is the time to have this now. Uh and, and, and if not, we can we can move forward. Do you know where the vendor um, current office is located? So, well, this is statewide security, right? So this is, uh, I, I assume they're still on Taylor Street. I don't know where, where uh, Carrie's uh, business is. Um, yeah, that was the last known location that, that I'm aware of, is previously, on Taylor Street. Yeah, previously it was on Taylor Street, right next to the, to the, to the township. Um, my first time seeing, seeing this, um, I, I know that the, on that side of Beltline, some of the neighborhoods are not as engaged as some of the others on on on, on Wells, West Belt Line. So you may do we do we know if there has been actual uh, neighborhood engagement on this issue? Uh, there, is, there is not. Okay. Is, is, if, if, Christa, I, let, oh, okay, please, Ed. Yeah, Christian, let me ask you that. The denial, of course, by the commission was based on what? Just just the are the reasons available? Well, the commission actually took a second vote to approve. Yeah, they were they were stuck on a tie vote, and then they then they had a second vote to approve four two. They went three three to four two. Uh, mm -hmm. Staff has recommended denial. And, uh, based and on Mr. Our Sheely may be on the and, and Mr. Sheely may be on the call. I'm not sure if you wanted to ask questions that, or we could um, conclude the zoning public hearing and hold first reading. However, would make you all most comfortable. All right. Well, we've had well. This is the public hearing. So we can we can actually yes, take sir. up uh, we can actually take up approval denial at any point. Not it doesn't have to be today, right? As long as we have the public hearing, is that correct? Correct. That's correct. All right. Um, is Mr. Sheely on the line? Gary, if you are, what's what's the process, Madam Clerk? Is it start three? And if, if Mr. Uh, McDowell, if there's some readiness and you want to hear some neighborhood uh, yeah. input, then certainly you can you can do that at some point as well. Um, let's just uh, decide how you want to move. Ed, is he? On, you, is he? Is I haven't he, heard. I, I have not heard him chime in yet. Well, if he chimes in later on, I would certainly move that um, we defer that conversation until we can get more information. I need some more information. Right. right. We're, gonna, we're, we're gonna hold on. We're gonna hold on item 49, 3209 North Beltline Boulevard. But the public hearing has so been we'll, held. Terrific. All right. Thank okay. you. Thank you. The next item. Item 50 is a zoning map amendment at 1527 Lyon, a number of addresses on Lyon Street. Um, this is a request to rezone the parcels from general commercial, that C3, to RG2. Um, this is to facilitate the redevelopment at Gonzales Gardens. All right. Is there, is there a motion? 
I'm sorry, is there someone here speaking in favor of or against? No, uh, sir, no one is in it. All right, fantastic. Mr. McDowell? So moved. Is there a second? Second. All right, discussion. Move the previous question. Clerk, call the roll. Mr. Brennan? Yes. Mr. Rickman? Aye. Mr. McDowell? Yes. Mr. Duvall? Aye. Mr. Vine? Aye. Mr. Davis? Aye. Mayor Benjamin? Aye. Thank you. Numbers 51 and 52 are related. So so if it pleases this council, you can take them together. The first is the future land use map confirmation for 215 Bush River Road to confirm the classification of UCAC3. And 52 is the zoning map confirmation at 215 Bush River Road to confirm the classification of C3. All right, uh, we'll take those two together. Is anyone to speak in favor of or against this item, these two items? All right. Hearing none, anyone, Madam Clerk? Not there. All right. Move, Mr. Chair. Sure move, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. McDowell. Is there a second? Second. All right. I uh, know the further discussion of council with the previous question. Clerk, call roll. Mr. Brennan? Yes. Mr. Rickman? Yes. Mr. McDowell? Yes. Mr. Duvall? Aye. Mr. Vine? Aye. Mr. Davis? Aye. Mayor Benjamin? Aye, thank you. Thank you. May Mayor, before I turn this over to Lee and John, um, I wanted just to state how absolutely proud and I am of these folks for what you're about to see. I know you all have been involved in the Compass during the time that it's been going ahead and it has exceeded my expectation in so many ways and staff worked tirelessly to get it to where it is and um i just i, I wanted this to be in person I'm, I'm a little heartbroken that we can't or do in person but um i hope these few words uh convey again how proud i am of these folks so i'll turn it over all right uh great thank you uh this is john and uh lee is on the call uh, with me as well. Um, this afternoon, we're excited to uh, present the final draft of the Columbia Compass for Review. This is our 10-year update to the city's comprehensive plan. Uh, we'd like to acknowledge uh, many of the city staff across all of the departments who have helped us put this uh, document together, as well as the um, incredible support we have uh, had from uh, City Council, Planning Commission, and the community as a whole. I'd also uh, like to uh, specifically Thank the planning division and uh, specifically Lee DeForth for her coordination, perseverance, and delivery um, of the plan on schedule. Um, for the brief presentation that follows this evening, Lee and I are um, recognized that you have uh, seen a lot of this information before, but since it is a public hearing, we wanted to make sure um, we presented all the information for those who are listening this afternoon. Um, I will be presenting the first half of the presentation and then uh, Lee, our comprehensive planner, will complete the second half and we will follow up with um, any questions you might have. And Lee is going to forward the slides. All right. Um, public engagement uh, was a critical, uh, what has been critical throughout the Columbia Compass planning process, and uh, we will continue uh, as we move through implementation uh, with uh, community involvement. We estimate over 62 hundred uh, points of engagement. This does not include those who uh, were reached via the water bill, mailing, social media efforts, or email subscribers. Um, most recently, we held two virtual public meetings in late June to provide an update um, refresher on the comprehensive plan, which was attended by a few people. Um, as you are well aware, the comprehensive plan is made up of nine elements, and I'm going to review uh, those briefly on the following slides. Uh, population. The population element provides an analytical backbone to the plan, examining demographic trends and anticipated shifts in needs and desires. Natural resources. Uh, chapter provides existing conditions and makes recommendations for programs, policies, and partnerships that will help us move forward uh, to be ready for 100. Um, prepare uh, for natural hazards and more. 
Uh, the economic development section provides information about the Midlands workforce and employers and makes recommendations regarding the city and the region's economic development efforts. The housing chapter includes a market and policy analysis and a number of recommendations regarding how we should work to meet the housing needs of our community. And the transportation chapter reviews trends, incorporates uh, Walk Bike Columbia and sets forth policy and infrastructure uh, recommendations. And I'm going to turn the slides over to Lee and the presentation. Thank you, John, um, and thank you all. Um, so the land use chapter is, is mostly carried forward from um, Plan Columbia, which was adopted in, in 2014, a land use element update, but we've added some additional items there and there are a number of recommendations about um, things like greenway development and future planning efforts. The cultural resources section, um, or I'm sorry, the community facilities section, um, jumping ahead, is in many ways a catch-all. So when we think about community facilities, we're not just thinking about the structures, we're thinking about the infrastructure and services we provide as a facility and a lot of the recommendations. We're losing some audio there. Is it just me? No. Uh, we lost your audio there. Um, uh -oh. Lee, can you just repeat the community facilities slide again? Sure, sorry. Oh, um, I turned up my volume, so hopefully that fixes it. Is, that, is this better? Oh, oh yeah, perfect. Mm -hmm. Okay, good, good stuff. Um, so the community facilities chapter really um, is, is a bit of a catch-all. So it covers not just facilities, but thinking about the infrastructure that we provide as a city, as well as the um, services that we provide and how we provide those services. So a lot of those recommendations are tied to that. And the cultural resources chapter is a, is partially a partnership with Amplify Columbia, but it reviews not only our arts and our communities, but also our, our historic resources and our identity as a community. And a lot of the recommendations are tied to how we can um, really make our community more vibrant through uh, our enforcement. And the priority investment chapter is really the meat of the, the plan as a whole. It's, it's where all the elements are summarized. It's where all the recommendations are summarized. But it's, um, I guess, what, what I'd really like to draw attention to is that um, there is a recommendation in the priority investment chapter that isn't anywhere else. And that is a recommendation that we provide some regular reporting on implementation progress for the plan. So we think that's going to be critical moving forward to help keep folks engaged. And I should note that the priority investment chapter also includes a number of priority transportation projects that were fleshed out during the transportation element planning process. Um, and so I don't think this is the slide that you all have seen before, but we do have 125 recommendations for Columbia Compass. And um, we can break those down a number of different ways by element, by priority, by how long we think it will take us to complete. Um, but, but really, there's so much um, overlap here. By land use and community facilities and, and economic development all, all in one. So we had to put things somewhere, but um, know that it's just comprehensive and interrelated. And um, this is a slide that y'all have seen before, but um, just keeping in mind that the plan organized by element, the recommendations cover a lot of these items here on the screen. But what I really wanted to draw council's attention to tonight is to remind y'all that we've made um, made sure that we've connected each of these recommendations back to the focus areas of Envision Columbia. So we're making sure that um, you're able to make that connection as you're moving forward with your strategic planning as well. And um, we've, we've, we've talked about next steps, it seems like for a very long time now, and we're happy to say that our next step is, is essentially tonight, but really the big next step is moving forward with implementation. So, we recognize that this is really just a, a stepping stone to kind of culminate in the planning process, but move forward. So we're going to be looking to build partnerships and collaborate with others, even if we have to do it remotely and, um, and work towards moving forward on implementation. And the Amplify Columbia process is also wrapping up and they um, anticipate coming to you all, I believe, next month to talk a little bit more about that further. And just in, in closing, I wanted to remind you all um, we, and, and everyone listening, there are a number of ways that folks can use Columbia Compass as a tool and that we hope you'll stay engaged. And so um, it's not just for council, it's not just for staff, and it's not just for citizens, but we hope that um, there are ways that y'all can use our annual reporting, um, following us on social media. You might find out some 
interesting things about the city um, that, you, that you haven't before that would help you kind of engage on implementation of this plan. So um, with that in summation, I just wanted to say thank you. As, as John and Krista have both said, y'all have been fantastic supporters of this planning process and um, we couldn't do it without council, um, without, without the incredible staff support we've received both in our department and, and citywide, and then of course the support of the community. So we really appreciate this opportunity and look forward to getting it going. All right, thank you very much. You guys have put, you guys have put so much time and effort uh, into this. I look forward to doing a deep dive into all the recommendations and um, uh, excited about it. Um, thank you for the very inclusive way in which you've approached it. Um, to get um, some very um, um, some significant community uh, participation. So thank you. All right. So I'll pull that screen back up. Um, is any um, um, well, we have, well? First, is there is there is there a motion? Um, I'm sorry. Is there? I think we're still in public. And are we still in public comment? Yes, uh, we are. The citizen yes, uh, input uh, and any citizen input in favor of or against this or uh, any um, call to this. If, if there not, are no one to in. Thank you. If, if, uh, is there a motion to approve? So moved. All right. Is there a second? Is second. there any uh, council discussion? Just um, John Lee, um, uh, thank you all, uh, Krista, the, the whole team. This has been a, 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 lot, of, a lot of hard work um, on putting this and let's uh, figure out how we're gonna, we're gonna chart the path of the future development of, the, of, this, of this city. So I appreciate y'all. With the previous question, per very proud of the mayor. I just want to add, absolutely. absolutely. And, and Mr. Mayor, if I could add, um, Lee Please. made the housing presentation, uh, the housing portion. She made a presentation to the affordable housing task force last week. Mm -hmm. All of the members were very impressed. They they thanked staff for all the hard work, but um, the comments that I got back were just it, it's going to make the beginning of our work a lot easier because of the data um, and the way that um, staff is presenting it in Compass, it'll give us an opportunity to um, really you know, move our work forward quickly. So thank you. And, and everybody was just utterly impressed, Lee. I have to say, I got so many emails about your presentation. Thank you. Great. Awesome. All right, um, with the previous question, Clark call the roll. And, that's, and guys, while we have screen sharing up, it's difficult to see the entire uh, groups so of someone else has something else to say y'all 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 jump in but if not um please call the roll madam clerk mr brennan yes mr rickman aye mr mcdowell you're on mute ed yes mr duvall aye mr vine aye Mr. Davis? Aye. Mayor Benjamin? Aye. And thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Mr. Mayor, at this time, you all will move into a period of appointments. You have the Design Development Review Commission and the Planning Commission. Thank you, Mayor. Yeah, yes, sir? Uh, we have a citizen, Roger Lurie, who says he, was, he wanted to make comment on the Columbia Compass. Uh, but was not called. All right. Um, sure. If he's is he, if he's still online, but what's the procedure, uh, Madam Clerk? Is it star three? Yes, sir. He would need to press star three. If he's on the line, Howard, did you instruct him to press star three? And um, it should open up his line. If you can hear me, Mr. Lurie. Star three. Um, okay. and, um, the clerk will make you available to counsel. We're not seeing uh, Dr. Lurie on the line. Is that is that Roger Lurie? I'm sorry. I uh, saw I just saw I just saw Roger's email pop up. Yeah. I text him back. Okay. Uh, the the essence of uh, of uh, Mr. Lurie's email, and I'll forward it to you, uh, Madam Clerk, is that uh, the section cultural resources 
especially cultural events, does, has no mention of the Columbia International Festival in the document. Uh, that's um, that that seems to be the um, he goes on for a couple of paragraphs, but that's the essence of of, of the concern. And I'll, sh I'll I'll forward that on to uh, to our, our, our presenters for, you know, for your consideration. But if we can't get them on, we're gonna we're gonna um, we're gonna move forward. He he says you can read my email that he sent most of you. Uh, uh, I, uh, I, I will, we're going to go ahead and incorporate that into the, um, uh, into the uh, uh, record. Um, it is coming to you right now, Madam Clerk. I think he only sent to me and me, me and Mr. Rickman, I believe. All Thank right. You. All right. But that is the essence of, of, the, of, the, of the concern. Okay. All right. Thank you. Let's move into a period of appointments. And there are a couple of items on there. Again, uh, uh, just a quick recap, um, the uh, uh, Beltline Boulevard item, I think we're going to have to maybe take up on our, on our next meeting if there's some resolution um, uh, there. I think we obviously have Mr. Davis's uh, issue. I'm not sure if we need to make sure we're in the period of motions if we uh, uh, direct uh, something to the Community Economic Development Committee. And was there one more item or are those the only two? I think those are the only two. Uh, Apple Valley. Um, and uh, Apple Valley. And, and, and that's deferred. Okay. All right. Thank you. Yes. Our DDRC, I think um, uh, Ms. Jenkins has sent an uh, updated memo um, early this morning. And um, Ms. she is online too, if you, if you all need her, Mayor Benjamin. All right. Um, so we, if you looked at the breakdown, District 3 has four members, District 1 has three, District 2 has zero. Which one are you on that, Daniel? Are you on DDRC now, Daniel? Or yeah. planning? Okay. So that is, sorry. Uh, can you continue, Daniel? I'm sorry. Yeah, I just was, I just want everybody to realize, I don't know if you've looked at the breakdown, but mm -hmm. what I see was District 3 had four members, District 1 had three members, District 2 had no members, and District 4 had one. So geographically, we need to, to look, and I don't know from the applicant standpoint, if we need to go back out to try to create some balance, but that that seems awfully lopsided. Um, uh, uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Yeah, the, 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 was that you teeing up, Mr. McDowell? Mr. McDowell. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes, sir. Can, yes, sir. Can we can we defer the can we defer this appointment until our next meeting? Um. Oh, uh, absolutely. I, I, yeah. Absolutely. Uh, and, and, and obviously, it's clear we should endeavor to um, find some additional representation from districts uh, two. And uh, now, mind you, they're, they're, they're only in four. Uh, we're, we will be able to see a significant shift. I don't know, but it's not clear to me exactly who's rotating off. Right. Uh, Mr. Bark Knight's off. He, he was a District one and um, uh, Michelle Moore is off. She's district three. So actually uh, there are, I guess, as currently stated, there are two from district one and um, three from district three, but there would be a wonderful opportunity uh, to um, to get some more balance there. Let's, let's, let, well, let's endeavor to put Mr. a bow on this next time around. Mr. Mayor, I just moved in that we defer this action until our next meeting next meeting okay yes sir all right uh is there a second yeah mr duval uh my comment is that uh, we're dealing with the planning commission vdrc and we in september we'll be dealing with boza uh i think these commissions are the top three of the commissions with the city of council points and that we should reserve these appointments to people that live inside the city limits uh, we have a lot of people on the applicant list that do not live in the city limits. And I, and I think when we start making these appointments, we need to take into consideration the people that do live in the city limits. Mr. Mayor, yeah, yes, could, yeah, I be, could I then, could I then, then of course, uh, defer the nominations of each one of these commission, DDRC and the planning commission for next meeting? The um, 
Sure. Uh, I, I, I know that Mr. Rickman was ready to move on planning commission uh, since uh, that's where we have the significant deficit of any representation from District 4. I was prepared to support his, uh, his nominee there. Can we hold on DDRC right now, uh, Ed, and, and take up planning commission and plan to take up DDRC next time around? Well, I'm, I'm, sort of, I'm sort of sensitive to what Mr. Uh, Duvall mentioned as mm -hmm. opposed to looking at the planning commission, if that oh, I, person, I'm sorry. I agree. I agree. No, I, I think that I think there's some sensitivity there that that, that historically I, I've been much more regional in my approach uh, 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 to this, but but I, I couldn't agree more. If we're talking about growing the city, we need to give some preference to those who live in the city, uh, and and certainly make sure that the uh, appointments are balanced out um, amongst the districts. So I, I couldn't agree more. So if Mr. Rickman is ready to move on the planning commission, of course, I'll hold steady with uh, deferring DDRC. Okay, all right, super. Well, all right. Um, uh, Mr. Mayor. I'm listening, yes, sir. How far out are some of the uh, um, roll offs from the committee? Because I I think we, I agree if, if we, if we kind of off balance on one, we could maybe move to, not do any uh, reappointments to help create some vacancies. Yeah, we, but yeah, we now mind you, we want to talk about sets on some of these uh, commissions, a, a small number of people. So one or two vacancies is a, is a, is a very big deal. Yeah. Uh, uh, the, but the imbalance on DERC is just striking. Um, right. So uh, we need to go and get someone from district two there. It's much more balanced on planning commission uh, right now. We got one person from district one, one from district two two from district uh, three, no one from district four, and one person from outside city limits. Uh, believe the person rotating off um, is Dale Stegemeyer from district three. If, that, if you gotta correct me if I'm wrong, Ashley, uh, but that'll, that'll bring us down to um, one person from district three. So I mean, it'll get us, get us fairly balanced. Help me out here, Ashley. Make sure, make sure I'm doing this right. Um, uh, so, so yes, we um, we Nine need reps from District Three and District Four um, from Planning Commission, and we receive applications from people in District Three and District Four. Um, but we had several resignations during the COVID, the the early part of the COVID nineteen period. Um, so that's why we're dealing with the vacancies for planning and the same for um, DDRC. Okay, but so the person going, that you mentioned is rolling off. Dale is, and then yeah. several people resigned. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we're gonna so we're gonna go we're gonna go ahead and hold the DRC per Mr. Uh, McDonald's recommendation, and, and we can we don't have to move. Um, um, Sam looks like we won't have to wait for uh, a bunch of vacancies. We got a bunch of vacancies. <laughs> if, but if y'all want some more time to digest uh, some of the uh, other planning commission uh, 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 nominations, we we have time for that. Uh, um, Mr. Mayor, uh, Mr. Duval, uh, Mr. Mayor, we, uh, we have Charlie Torini listed in District Two. That's his office. He actually lives in District Four. Okay. He lives in Kings Grant. Well, that's, well he's okay. apparently put he's well. That's must be how he's listed. He's put his uh, work addresses both. Um, uh, yes. Both had, yeah. All right. Well, let, well, we're going to hold on DDRC. Um, uh, for now, we'll take up the next meeting. I think uh, maybe consistent with Mr. Uh, McDowell's request, we'll, we'll go ahead and um, hold those applications open for another 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 week or week or so. Maybe um, close them out a week yeah. before our next meeting. Is that fine, Ed? All right. And yes, so sir. I'm, I'm moving the previous question then. All right. And uh, that's well, that's the whole URC, and then we'll take up uh, uh, planning commission. I should there's yes, a sir. motion. Uh, that, did you do a Duval and did you did you make the motion in second and two? Uh, I did. Okay. <laughs> I'll, sec I'll second I'll second your motion. Uh, it, uh, it's much easier that way. It, it yeah. is very it's, quite, it's very efficient. Uh move the previous question on just holding DDRC, although we're the right on to do it, let's do it. All right, move the previous question per call roll. Mr. Vernon? Yes. Mr. Rickerman? Aye. Mr. McDowell? Yes. Mr. Duval? Aye. Mr. Vaughn? Aye. Mr. Davis? Aye. Mayor Benjamin? 
I and continue to accept applications for the ERC, Ashley, um, and, and any of you on, on, on the phone or um, certainly council. If you have some good um, recommendations, please encourage folks to, uh, to apply and especially those who might be active uh, city residents. Uh, Planning Commission, um, Mr. Rickman. Uh, I would like to move forth Mason Hart as um, District 4 representative on the Planning Commission. All right, I'll second that motion. All right, um, and we can hold on the others uh, in, until yeah. until the next meeting as well. That's all right. Yes, or, I, no. yes, yes. I would I, I would just, like just, to uh, I would like to elect Charlie Torini. It, uh, I think District Four has got several spots available, and Charlie actually lives in District Four. Um, uh, but I like I like I like Charlie too. So um, I'll, I'll second that motion as well. Um, so district four reps will, will move Mason Harp and Charlie Trini. Um, motion on the first one by Mr. Rickman, I second. Motion by Mr. Duval, I second. Uh, we'll move the previous question, clerk, call the roll. Mr. Brennan? Yes. Mr. Rickman? Aye. Mr. McDowell? Yes. Mr. Duval? Aye. Mr. Vine? Aye. Mr. Davis? Aye. Mayor Benjamin? Aye. Uh, Ashley, so um, would you send out a new memo reflecting the two new uh, appointees? Uh, let's yes. get our, help us get our heads around who else has uh, resigned and, and how that changes the balance on there. And okay, let's go, absolutely. Let's go ahead and, and also leave, the, uh, leave it open for additional um, applications as well until. Okay. Uh, until just before our next meeting, okay? Okay, I'll send out those press releases and handle the other items as well. Yes, sir, thank All right, you. All right, thanks a million. You're thanks welcome. for your work. You're welcome, thank you. Hey, um, Ashley, will you send us your notice advertising so that we can send our email list to make sure that folks are paying attention? Absolutely, I can do that. I know we did one for the last one. I'll make sure to update it and send it to you all, and I can do that this evening so you can distribute it. Yes, sir, no problem. Okay. You're welcome. All right. All right. So, um, Madam City Manager. Thank you, Ashley. Um, other matters, items. Thank you, Ms. Teresa. Council is asked to approve a 25 mile per hour speed limit on select streets in the Rosewood and South Kilbourne neighborhoods as requested by the Public Works Department. Mr. Brennan. Uh, motion to approve. Second. Any discussion? With the previous question, court call the roll. Mr. Brennan. Yes. Mr. Rickman. Aye. Mr. McDowell. Yes. Mr. Duval. Aye. Mr. Vine. Aye. Mr. Davis. Aye. Uh, Aye, thank you. Thank you. Mr. Manager. Item 57, council is asked to approve a four-way stop at the intersection of Waccamaw and Kiowa as requested by the Public Works Department. Right, Move for Mr. approval. Brown. All right, second. Any discussion? We'll move the previous question. Clerk, call the roll. Mr. Brennan. Yes. Mr. Rickman. Aye. Mr. McDowell. Yes. Mr. Duvall. Aye. Mr. Vine? Aye. Mr. Davis? Aye. Mayor Benjamin? Aye. All right. Um, well, let's entertain a motion uh, real quick to have a, a, a full report convening of, of, of staff and all interested parties uh, before the Economic and Community Development Committee um, or regarding Mr. Davis's previously uh, uh, raised concerns around MBE participation. Uh, we'll, get a, we'll get a full report and, and uh, an update uh, from staff uh, at the uh, committee meeting. Um, is, that, is that consistent, Mr. Davis, with your previous concerns? Uh, yeah. We, okay. All right. We've All right. worked with the city manager's staff today. All right. Let's get it. All right. Uh, so that's a motion. Is there a second? Second. All right. With the previous question, Kirk, call the roll. Mr. Brennan? Yes. Mr. Rickman? Aye. Mr. McDowell? Yes. Mr. Duvall? Aye. Mr. Vine? 
Turn your mic on. Hi. Mr. Davis. Hi. Mayor Benjamin. Hi. Hi. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, now we're going to go into a period of public input. And we really want to thank uh, the public for sticking through. I mean, the, the, the summer meetings can sometimes get pretty long as we have a, a number of items and including a, a bunch of important zoning and planning items uh, before us. But now we have an opportunity for public input. Uh, I know um, we have a, a, at least a, um, uh, a good number of calls on the, on the phone right now. Uh, Madam Clerk, would you remind everyone of the, of the rules? And uh, let's, let's uh, go ahead and, and, and start there. Okay, um, each caller will be allotted three minutes to speak. You'll hear a beep at 30 seconds. And at that time, you should start wrapping up your comments. At this time, we have about six callers on the line and two voicemails that have been left. And sure. so I will start with, um, it looks like Roger Lurie has joined um, the speaker's sure. queue if you'd like to hear from him at this time. Yeah, um, we, we, we'll let Raj come um, maybe after everyone else, since everyone else has been waiting for so long. Um, okay. I, I, I will, I will, I'm sorry, Mr. Mr. McDowell. Yeah, I just wanted to know whether or not that was item 49, whether or not Mr. Sheely was on the line now, or whether did he come on? No, sir. Okay, thank you. Okay, you still want to hold that, right, Ed? You yes. Still hold okay. Yes. All right. All right. And we'll have some, uh, obviously, some opportunities maybe between now and the next meeting to engage on, on, the, on, on that item. I do want I, I just I know we're going to have uh, extensive conversations about law enforcement uh, and, I, and I look forward I, I've seen some back and forth um, uh, um, emails between um, uh, citizen leaders and, and, and city council members and appreciate the, the, the thoughtful um, uh, and, and civil uh, discussion there. I would be remiss uh, obviously as we talk about the incredible incredibly important role that um, our law enforcement officers play. Uh, in, in this community to, to not recognize the service of, uh, of uh, Robert Hall. Um, we, we, um, uh, we lost uh, uh, him, I, just, I guess, just a week ago now. And it's um, uh, amazing, obviously, uh, all of us don't know every single member of the, of the police department um, by name, but we do, know, we do know Robert Hall and his incredible dedication. You, you, you know the... Uh, uh, whether it's something as, as seemingly routine as a as a uh, as a or a jog through Columbia or, or, or 5K or some of the most incredibly significant and challenging marches or protests that we've had over the last uh, uh, at least decade that I've been around, um, he he always engaged people uh, with a great deal of civility, uh, did his job, did it well, served the people of Columbia well for uh, better than three decades. And we just want to um, send our, our, our sympathies and our love uh, to the Hall family and to the, um, his, his friends and family at the Columbia Police Department as well. Didn't want to um, didn't miss that moment. So um, uh, thank you. Uh, Madam, Madam Clerk, you, know, you have a sense as to who's been on the line the longest. Maybe if we can take them in, 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 in some type of order. Uh, I know several citizens have been waiting a while. Um, let's, let's go. Yes, sir. So we have, um, I believe, William Starrett with the Columbia City Ballet, and I'm going to queue him up now. Thank you. William? Mrs. Starrett? All right. Well, we um, we will move on to the next caller at this time. I have, I believe, Mrs. Uh, Elaine Cooper. Hey, uh, Elaine. Uh, was it star three, Erica? Yes. All right, please. All right, Mrs. Cooper. I don't know if they've been holding so long that they went on to do something else. But. Oh, Elaine wouldn't go anywhere. <laughs> All right. Well, we'll come. We'll, we'll, double, we'll double back to, to to both of them. Make let's make sure we don't have any technical issues. Uh, let's see who we have uh, next. Yeah, we, well, let's try uh, Miss Catherine Davis.
Ms. Davis, are you on? Maria says, just unmute it. Okay, we figured out what the technical problem is. So okay. hold one moment. Okay. All right, I'm gonna go back to Ms. Cooper. Can you hear me now? Yes, yes you sure can. Thank you. Sure can, Thank you. Thanks for your patience. Okay. Wow. This is Elaine Cooper. Um, it's been over it's two hours and eight minutes. I guess that's an improvement from the last time that uh, citizens had to wait over three hours, I guess. But anyways, um, I am a city resident, a taxpayer, a voter, and a member of the Richland County Black Collective. I have met many of you all, and so, uh, you know, howdy. And so we're here um, to draw your attention to the fact that we sent all of you an email. And we would like for you to look at that email and to set up meetings with the Richland County Black Collective separately, Steve Benjamin and each um, city council person because we do have a mayor and all the other city council members have equal say. With that said, I just wanna introduce us. The Richland County Black Collective is a coalition of community activists that serve as dedicated volunteers that advocate for change within the community while holding all elected officials accountable. Today, we wanted to draw your attention to our purpose which is police reform policy. In a nutshell, we're asking folks to redirect funds, not defund the police, just to have total clarification as we begin. So basically, um, I will now refer to the last city council meeting and all that what had been decided with the budget. We really wanted to address the use of force. We insist that you ban all forms of vascular neck restraint with no exception. That was included, I know, I know they talked about no chokehold, but allowed a vascular neck restraint. Also, there was a movement to allow um, rubber bullets and tear gas against citizens, the right to protest, what America is all about the right to stand in the streets and protest, innocent protesters, rubber bullets and tear gas are still allowed in our city. We're citizens, we're not a military enemy. Tear gas and rubber bullets are used in a military section. By the way, tear gas and rubber bullets are not allowed against immigrants coming across the border, just to, just to let everyone know. But anyways, um, also we would like to talk about um, other our other situations um, and concerns. Um, so to summarize, I would like you all to read our emails. Yeah, mine is a request from a member of the Richland County Black Collective in the subject line to read our um, our whole document, get back to us for a meeting. Uh, my email is um, ecohillbilly at gmail.com. My phone number is 803-348-0911. And um, other than that, just speaking of waiting, while we were waiting, I was shocked to hear that anyone would be appointed to any of the, um, by the, at the city uh, that does not live within the city limits. Um, and that, that we go back to our original thought that the city of Columbia and Richmond County should mandate that the police live within the city, live within Richland County. How else can we improve the situation that has, has totally moved the entire nation and the world the problem with, with everyone is that um, we're so separated. Why not? It's a win-win situation 
to have the city of Columbia hire and keep police officers in the city, have them live in the city. And we talk about that in our document, along with talking to Sheriff Lott and encouraging, insisting that he, that he hire and keep officers, once they're hired, that they live within Richland County. So the community can get to know them and they can get to know the community, not at a few cookouts or a few events, but at an ongoing basis. Okay, thank you, Mrs. Cooper. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Ms. Cooper. And, and, I, and I, do, I do want to make sure everyone uh, does know, I've received maybe at least uh, between eight and 10 emails, uh, the same substance, uh, good substance, uh, worth the dialogue. I look forward to having the dialogue as I know several of the council members also rep replied in the affirmative. Be happy to pull together even a, a, a meeting and um, um, obviously a virtual meeting uh, to discuss some of them. Some of the issues obviously are already addressed in policy or in action by the, uh, by, uh, the Columbia Police Department. Some areas I know the city, um, uh, the chief of police is already looking at. Uh, some issues are um, obviously legal issues. I'm not sure you can require a police officer to live in the city, but I will tell you we have a very robust um, uh, 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 plan uh, that incentivizes that type of activity because we do think it, it, it endures to the benefit of the city for um, all of our um, uh, employees, not only our, our, um, our public safety officials uh, to live uh, in the city. But some good uh, content there, some good substance, some things that are already happening um, and look forward to that uh, that dialogue. All right, um, Madam Clerk. Yes, sir. Um, we are adding Ms. Catherine Davis to the meeting. All right, thank you. Yes. Good evening, Mayor Benjamin and esteemed members of the City Council. Can you hear me? Yes, ma'am. Sure can. This is Catherine Davis. I'm a Columbia. I'm a proud Columbia resident for more decades than I'm going to say publicly, <laughs> living in a family home that was built in the 1930s. So I'm very committed to the well-being of Columbia. I, um, I'm also calling, I'm, I would like to speak briefly on two things. The first being the proposal for, for a very um, concentrated law enforcement reform policy in Columbia. We see that, that this is happening very quickly all across the United States as cities and states both recognize the urgency and the importance of making very dramatic changes in the way that we have gotten used to policing our entire country. Um, we have put a very concentrated effort into looking at this and um, thank you Mayor Benjamin for your um, kind remarks about what you have seen so far. We do urge you to read it very carefully and consider it in all of its details. We have provided documentation and evidence um, supporting several of the points that we're asking for. Uh, we look forward to meeting you Mayor Benjamin and the City Council members to discuss this to bring other concerned citizens in, into the dialogue. And we would like to be placed on the agenda for the city council meeting for the next meeting on August 4th. Sure. The second thing is I, I as, as Mayor Benjamin and council members, you have received a, an email from me supporting the very strongest, most concerted, concerted efforts that we can make to stem the rapid rise of COVID in our city. Um, we realize the frustrations that we have as a local group when we don't have state support for this. It is extremely frustrating and so many of us do not understand it. But I will say that we have an indisputable example of success in this country in front of us. And as I said, Mayor Keisha Bottoms in Atlanta has accepted the generous offer of help from that state. I suggest that we do the same. That's me in the state of New York. That's, about. that's the state of New York. Yes, I am. You know, I don't say I don't say it because so many of us Southerners are so anti-New York, anti-North. It doesn't matter. They've been so successful. I work there. I have many friends who live there. I've been talking 
to them on a daily basis since the, begin, uh, since the beginning right. of March. And those people, even in New York City, are able to walk around with fairly normal lives. That is the most difficult place in the country to enact this, and they did it. Let me, Thank you. Let me say this, I'm, a, I'm a relocated Yankee, just like Elaine Cooper. I was born and raised in South Jamaica, Queens. So there's no there's no aversion to, to following a good public health policy. Okay, even, well, you, even if it comes you and I are, are, are in a minority here, Mayor. <laughs> Yes, yes, thank, no, I, I was. I will say this. I, I know times right off. Uh, thank you for both of your very thoughtful emails, and and um, uh, we certainly can look at time on the agenda. But uh, I I I'd prefer if we actually had some type of a meeting like this where we can actually dialogue. Uh, usually, uh, council meetings are places they hear hear from the public. Uh, oftentimes, uh, concerns and protestations, but not really a chance to actually dialogue and maybe even receive a presentation. Um, uh, either from you and also get some information back from the police department. We, we you know, obviously, we, 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 we're, we're talking about social distancing on, on one end and the other time we're talking about social cohesion. So let, let's have a meeting in which we can actually talk back and forth and, and we'll look forward, uh, I have your emails and uh, we'll look forward to setting something like that up, okay? All right, uh, thank you. Uh, Madam, Madam Clark? There was a, there was a, there must have, the gentleman, young man's on the phone who who, who uh, came on earlier as well, or if Mrs. Starrett's available too, uh, since he was the first one up earlier. Okay, well, I'll go back to uh, the gentleman, and I didn't catch his name, but I'll go ahead and add him back to the speaker's you now. Thank you. You're welcome. Well, hello, everybody. Can everybody hear me? Yes, sure okay. can. Yes, yes. My name is Emmanuel Afrifa. I am a teacher with Van Richland too. I'm also um, similar to Mayor Benjamin, a native New Yorker. I originally um, was born and raised in the Bronx, New York. I'm sorry, um, to, hear, I'm I'm sorry to hear that. A, sorry to hear that, but go ahead. I'm, so, I'm sorry to hear that you're from Queens, but it happens <laughs> to the best of us. <laughs> um, but the most important thing is that I'm also stand with the Richland County Black Collective in terms of looking at how we could adjust uh, police policy um, in terms of how it impacts our neighborhoods. Um, I've taught in New York, I've taught in Pittsburgh, and now I've been here in Columbia for about three years. And I am very concerned about the state at which um, my students, um, in terms of their relationship with the police for. And so, um, as was echoed earlier, um, I'm. We are very excited to hear from you guys and have a meeting one-on-one -on -one with each of you uh, pertaining to your perspective on our proposal. Uh, we did hear that there are some items within the proposal that you have already um, may have examined prior, um, but at the same time, I, we still think it's important to revisit, reinforce, and uh, promote uh, society within Columbia uh, where Residents do not live in fear of those who are supposed to protect them. And so, you know, I'm just here to echo on uh, what my fellow um, concerned citizens have mentioned, Elaine Cooper and Catherine Davis, and we look forward to hearing from you shortly. Um, I also know that you received several emails from us um, in terms of like responding to an email to schedule a meeting. There is a centralized email account for our group known as the Richland County DC at gmail.com. Um, I believe you guys should be receiving that email. If you haven't received it before, you should be receiving it shortly. And that will be the best space to schedule a time for us to meet, especially on Zoom. So um, thank you for your time. And Again, I'm sorry to hear that you're from Queens, Mayor Benjamin, but you know, what can we do? We'll give we'll give, we'll give y'all uh, credit for starting the hip hop. We perfected it, so uh, we'll, we'll go. <laughs> uh, no, thank no, thank y'all. You guys start making Minaj now. I don't get it. Right, okay. <laughs> oh, man. All right. yeah. Hey, the um, it's, it's so it's so important too. Uh, council decided uh, two meetings ago, and staff has been very uh, uh, deliberate about pulling together a process. Uh, that will that will engage the community in a very thoughtful and aggressively inclusive way over the next several months in this discussion about where we go in 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 on all things, not just on public safety and law enforcement, 
but but how we thread this um, uh, the spirit of, of equity and inclusion uh, throughout all the things that we do consistent uh, with our, um, our our vision plan uh, that that council has adopted and is living um, um, uh, uh, every single day. So we look forward to to those of you who are active leaders in, in the uh, Richard County Black Collective um, are playing a role in that discussion as well. So we got we got some time for that. That will be um, 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 a, 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 a very soon, very soon. So, uh, but thank you, thank you, um, uh, Madam Clerk. Okay, we have William on the line. Thank you. Hey, Will. Well, sorry for that. Uh, but sorry for that earlier. Thank you for waiting. No, no worries. Uh, I understand. It can get complicated technically. Uh, first of all, I just want to sincerely thank you, Mayor, and each council member, our city manager for the highly commendable manner in which you've managed our COVID-19 pandemic. Your leadership and insight has made me very proud to be a citizen of Columbia. Secondly, even though I understand the tough financial decisions the council has to make in light of the pandemic, I respectfully request that the performing arts not be overlooked in your planning. Celebrating our 60th consecutive season, the Columbia City Ballet has been and continues to be an asset, celebrating 60 years um, and it's a, we're an important source of contribution to the age tax revenue stream. Mm -hmm. We also continue our commitment to diversity through our programming, such as Off the Wall and Onto the Stage, Dancing the Art of Jonathan Green, our ballet Emmanuel, our ballet what, what the World Needs Now. And in 2022, we have a new ballet titled Motown. We have also formed a new diversity and inclusion committee at the level of our board of directors. It's chaired by our board member Megan Pickney, and this commitment will, uh, this committee will provide guidance to, for our diversity and inclusion in, incentives and initiatives throughout the organization. I implore you, the funds for the Columbia City Ballet at a level equal to minimum of 50% of last year's allocation. It's roughly about $86,000. These funds will allow us to mount our 60th anniversary season and to maintain the employment of our 25 professional dancers and our eight staff members. I want to bring your attention that when this crisis does ultimately end, our city will need to have a viable performing arts organization to attract residents, businesses, and tourists. Why the city can retain its vitality if we lose if we lose a few restaurants and bars, but the city only has one Columbia City Ballet and one South Carolina Philharmonic, and et cetera, you know, other arts groups. It is just important that you continue to invest in these organizations to protect the future of our city. So um, we can, I have several plans um, to be able to do the Nutcracker, uh, several theaters lined up, um, thinking outside the box in terms of even Sacred Park. We have um, reserved um, the fairgrounds, the Coger Center, the, um, as well as the, um, the uh, Township Auditorium. So we are just desperate to be able to perform our, our 60th anniversary season. and. Um, to be able to employ our 25 dancers. So we just implore you, please, if, um, we just really need at least 50% of our funding that we um, traditionally receive from the city, from our public funding. Mm -hmm. So um, we are- <laughs> Thank you, Will. The performing arts is really important and I just wanna stay on your radar. So, and yeah. again, I just wanna thank all of you. You're doing a great job and um, this is a really tough time, but um, any any help you can do with our funding, we just really, really um, desperately need. Thank, no, thank you, Wim. I, I completely understood and, and um, registered. Appreciate you. All right. All right. Thank you. Thank you all so much. All right. Bye -bye. Madam Clerk. Next up, we have uh, Mr. Abdullah Mustafa. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Mustafa. Mr. Mustafa? You checking in, Ms. Uh, Hammond? Yes, sir. We're trying to get him connected. Um, Hello. Hello. Okay, hey, there, there, you, there you go. There you go. Yes, sir. We, got, we hear you, Hello. Mr. We hear you. Okay. Okay. How's everyone? Uh, Mayor, Councilman, body? Uh, I hope everyone is safe. Yes, sir. I, I want to um, speak on on several issues. Uh, I'm not going to reiterate what uh, 
what my members, the Richmond County Black Collective, reiterated. But when we meet with the mayor, we like to meet with the city council as a whole. Uh, and of course, as you stated, Mayor, we would like to meet, uh, you know, like we're doing now, not as you say with the city council, which is correct about that. Um, the Columbia Police Department, uh, prior to Kemp, uh, needs, needs some improvement, just like most of the entities. Okay. Uh, my dear brother, uh, Gray Eye, son, as of the day, city council body, uh, as Gray Eye stated, no one has been investigated or anything. Okay. We're talking about knowledge STEM, seven year old child who was killed and supposed to be gang activity. But no one as of the day has been investigated. And that's, that's kind of mind boggling to me. Okay. That's mind boggling to us, period. Okay. So we want uh, some action behind that. Okay, uh, at least by now, you know, someone should have by now, you know, been investigated, I would think, but, but, not, but not so. There's an issue with a uh, young man, uh, counsel, who we're advocating for. His name is Amir Bag Bagley, B-A-G-L-E-Y. He was terminated from the fire department because of the fact that supposedly uh, he was allegedly said that he threatened the police department because he made a comment about Joshua Russell, okay? As we looked into this thing, he was wrongfully terminated. And we want, we want the council body to look into this, okay? Because again, if the council is about justice and we are about justice, this young man was wrongfully terminated. So we would like for the council body as a whole to look into Mr. Bagley, Amir Bagley was terminated on April the 10th allegedly threatened. And again, we have some serious issue with that because as we look into it, some other things, there was criminal activity by two individuals had DUIs, but yet though they back at work. But we want some justice for that. But most of all, we want to be able to get co community policing where the police and the community has a relationship. And right now they don't have a relationship. Okay. This is why the Richmond County Black Elect Form. It's a grassroots organization. Everyone is volunteer. And the goal is to hold local official accountable. Servant leadership is what we're looking for. And prior to Kemp, I'd be the first to say the poor and the under, underserved has not been served, has not been served at all. And they're not pleased. And of course, we're not pleased neither. So again, having said that, we're looking forward to the meeting soon. And we'll be waiting. And in conclusion, silence is not an option. Thank you very much for listening. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mustafa. I'm not sure who else we have, Madam Clerk, but just in the interest of, of full disclosure and uh, some things you just can't leave on the table, uh, the police department has worked very hard and closely with the family in the investigation of the murder of Knowledge Sims. Uh, we, we, we hope that will actually lead to community engagement in actually helping solve a crime uh, there that um, uh, that particular crime uh, the murder of this child uh, broke the hearts of a lot of folks in, in this community but our folks are working hard to solve uh, the crime um, and so that's, that's that that would be compelling if it were in fact true so I would sort of make sure I, I address that that misstatement the other personnel items um, will we'll handle those through the, the uh, processes are established and, and always handle them uh, right. Uh, but we look forward, nonetheless, to continuing uh, community dialogue on, on all the issues uh, that you raised, um, uh, sir, uh, as well as those raised by previous callers. Who else we have, Ms. Um, Mrs. Hammond? Um, I have an unidentified caller, uh, last four digits ending in 2895, that I'm going to add to the queue now. All right, please ask the caller to identify himself or herself. Mr. Mayor, I think Mr. Duvall had his hand raised. I, I'm sorry, I can't, I can't see. I'm sorry, Mr. Duvall. Uh, Mr. Mayor, I just wanted to second what you said about the case of knowledge, Tim. I know that this is a personal uh, challenge for both the chief and the deputy chief, and that the police department is, is, uh, is 
focused on finding the shooters in this case. Those shooters are known to the community. And if you're talking about community policing, the community needs to step up and turn in the people that shot knowledge Sims. Well, thank you, thank you, Mr. Mr. Duvall. Thank you. All right, all right. Um, Madam Clerk, this is our uh, last caller, please. All right, I'm going to unmute the caller now. Okay, if your number ends Hello. at 20, yes, ma'am, thank you. Please state your name. My name is Bailey Butler. Thank you. Yes, my name is Bailey Butler. Um, I'm a resident of the 29203 area code, um, Barrow Road specifically. Um, and I'm calling in today to talk to city council and Mayor Benjamin um, and the city manager about uh, a petition that I started two weeks ago um, is to eliminate food deserts in Columbia, South Carolina. I know that the city has a council, a food, a food policy council in place to address this issue and has published a report in 2019 regarding the issue at hand. But since the pandemic has begun and hit us hard, there are a lot of things that we need to think about. With 29223, which is um, specifically Belt, uh, Park Lane and Decker Boulevard, um, that's some of the highest spread we've had in Richland County. Um, do, uh, with COVID-19 and I just really want to think I uh, want the council to consider that going out to your uh, to retrieve food every day or uh, going to your convenience store and having to interact with people every day to even get um, just a snack or something small because you don't have proper groceries or produce nearby that you can harbor in your refrigerator is something that contributes to spread. Um, so that is putting these people in these communities, which are the 29223, the 29203, and the 29204 at risk for higher opportunities to contract COVID-19. Also, COVID-19 is impacting our higher um, education institutions. So USC Allen Bennett, and Allen and Benedict Colleges, um, they will have some problems with feeding students this year because students cannot interact in the cafeteria. There will have to be social distancing. And then also you have to think about students who live off of campus. So I want the city to consider trying to put more accessible points um, for students and young families and senior citizens in Columbia to make sure that we have established access and adequate access so that we can reduce spread in Richland County so that we can also reduce spread in the city of Columbia. I appreciate the efforts that have been made by city council so far to reduce that spread. But when people are going hungry and they have to go out frequently, that contributes to um, the spread. I also would like city council and the people on this call to know that there is also an event um, hosted by Empower SB next week, um, July 31st where you can put, drive up or walk up and receive a box of um, produce for your household. So I just want everybody to be aware. And the petition that was started two weeks ago has garnered over a thousand signatures. So there are a lot of people in the city and across the nation who are really um, supportive of eliminating the food desert in Columbia, South Carolina. And I appreciate the time. Ms. Butler, before you go, I want to thank you. I enjoyed I enjoyed reading about you. Uh, I think you're College of Charleston, a student. Is that right? Is that right? Yes, yes, sir. You've seen me a couple of times. Yes, yes ma'am. I enjoy, I, enjoy, I enjoy reading about you. Keep doing what you're doing. Uh, I'd love to get you involved with the Food Policy Committee. Obviously, we're hosting, I believe, uh, the Empower SC event um, at, at the city's uh, Drew Wellness Center. I personally contributed uh, to it, and, and I think we're going to uh, be pulling together some additional resources. Uh, to support the uh, the event, no, um, certainly challenges that exist yes, in, in uh, our food systems in the city have only been exacerbated. And that's why um, the city stepped up its its efforts, um, certainly as it relates to food and security among seniors. And I think there's some other innovative ways we can get involved, but we'd love to get uh, more young, bright minds like yours involved in helping shape the future, the present and the future of, of, of the community. So. Uh, so thank you for what you're doing. Let's uh, let's stay uh, in the dialogue, okay? Yes, sir. Most definitely. Thank you. All right. All right. Thank you, Zaley. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh,
Madam, Madam Clerk, if uh, we have no one else, we got, I think we got some, a couple of uh, audios and, and I will uh, we'll let Mr. Um, Vidal uh, speak first. And then I think we, we have- We do uh, have uh, two additional callers, Ms. Lori Donais. Um, two more calls will come in? Mr. Yes, sir. Well, uh, this young lady was holding, but she didn't understand okay. how to join the speaker queue. Okay, well, let's hear from Mr. McDowell first, and then we'll then we'll um, uh, we'll we'll get the the other callers online. Okay, Mr. McDowell. All right, thank you. Yes, Mr. Mayor. Um, one of the issues that one of the callers called and referenced was the issue of the uh, city employee being terminated. Um, I would think that there were the proper HR procedures and protocol instituted relative to that young man or the employee. Yeah. Um, that conversation, of course, is an HR conversation. Um, and how do we want to breach that kind of conversation? Um, it's my understanding that the proper protocol was taken care of. Uh, the proper protocol was put in place for perhaps the termination of this employee. Are we correct in saying that? Yes, sir, Reverend McDowell. It was proper and it was consistent. Thank you, ma'am. All right. All right. Thank you. All right. Um, the next uh, um, caller, Ms. Uh, Hammond. Okay, we have Ms. Donace added to the meeting. Announce the name again, please. Hello, Hello yes, ma'am. Please state your name for the record. Yes, ma'am. My name is Taya Vasovic, and I really want to thank you for your patience. Um, I'm here in conjunction with Lori Donut, uh, who's going to be speaking. Um, I'm also here representing the Hiroshima Nagasaki Remembrance Committee. Thank you for giving me the opportunity to speak today. I would like to affirm. What I'm sorry, I, I think Lori is supposed to go first. Uh, is it possible to let her go? Uh, certainly. Thank you. I apologize. Is that possible, Erica? Uh, yes, they're on the. I thought they were on the call together. Um, I'm so sorry. Yeah, I called them. All right. Do you need for us to come back to you? Uh, no, ma'am. She's she's ready and available. I believe she's the only other call on here. Okay. Um, okay. Okay. Yes, sir. Hold on a second. Hello. Okay, I am I am unmuted. Good afternoon. <laughs> hey there. Hello. It's I'm Lori Donis, and I represent the Hiroshima Nagasaki Remembrance Committee of Columbia Friends Meeting as well. Um, and I'm very, heart it's heartening to hear all the work that the city is doing um, and in collaboration with, with so many other parties, um, especially the Richland County Black Collective. Um, I am here today because uh, July 16th marked the first anniversary of Mayor Benjamin's and Columbia City Council's Mayors for Peace Proclamation. And uh, for those who are unfamiliar, Mayors for Peace, a nonpartisan international network of municipalities registered at the UN, created a peace action plan, which is instrumental to that proclamation. It has two objectives to lead to the goal of world peace, if you remember. The first objective is the realization of a world without nuclear weapons. And the second is the realization of safe and resilient cities. Uh, as the president of Mayors for Peace, Kazumi Matsui stated, we're working first and foremost to abolish nuclear weapons, to protect people from mass destruction, and also working hard to equip cities with higher resilience to make them capable to address various issues of their own, such as sustainable development, the refugee crisis, or countering terrorism. By signing the peace proclamation in 2019, the city of Columbia recognized that building nuclear weapons is in opposition to creating a more peaceful world, and that foremost, the well being of people is the concern of government. We thank you, Mayor Benjamin, and council members for leading the way toward nuclear non proliferation, 
safety and resilience for residents by joining mayors for peace and proclaiming Columbia a city for peace last year. The proclamation is all the more significant in light of the challenges we face in 2020. Never before have we seen so clearly, I think, the need for resilience within government and community. Never before have we seen so clearly the need for safety along multiple dimensions at the same time. Alongside the COVID-19 epidemic, the economic downturn, fragile healthcare infrastructure, the erosion of civil liberties and persistent and systematic racial inequality, the breadth of which many in America have begun to understand for the first time, the use of public funds to create new nuclear weapons is also underway. The federal government continues to race to establish the creation of additional triggers in the form of plutonium pits for nuclear weapons at nearby Savannah River sites and at Los Alamos. Apart from the unprecedented global risk posed by the active pursuit of new nuclear weapons, Tom Clements, director of Savannah Riverside Watch, a nonprofit watchdog group, describes plutonium pit production at the Savannah River site as unjustified and provocative, citing prospective costs as well as environmental hazards. The plan to have a production site in our state for the triggers for nuclear weapons should set off alarms that we must work for peace. For over 30 years, Columbia area citizens have recognized that nuclear war would bring about the destruction of our world. And many have worked to educate one another and to remember Hiroshima and Nagasaki as well as to say never again. We hope you'll join us socially distanced uh, Saturday, August 8th at Maine and Blanding to remember the 75th anniversary of the bombing, to honor the survivors and to stand against proposed production of new triggers. Um, for nuclear weapons at SRS. And also, if you can join us online, August 6th and 9th um, in observations streaming, you can go to Facebook Hiroshima Remembrance, Envisioning Peace Now. And I thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Lori. And they get a, a second speaker. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, ma'am. Thank you so much for your patience. Again, I'll be very quick. Um, my name is Tina Basadik, and I'd like to thank you, Mayor Benjamin, and respected okay. council members. I'm here today representing the Hiroshima and Nagasaki Remembrance Committee as well. Thank you so much for the opportunity to speak. And I'd like to affirm what Lori just said, um, to ask for your opposition to the production of plutonium pits at SRS as part of our effort as Mayors for Peace. We'd also like to close with a statement which Dr. King made when he accepted the Nobel Prize in 1964, and I quote, sooner or later, all the people of the world will have to discover a way to live together in peace and thereby transform this pending cosmic elegy into a creative psalm of brotherhood. If this is to be achieved, then man must evolve for all human conflict, a method which rejects revenge and aggression and retaliation. The foundation of such a method is love. I refuse to accept the view that mankind is so tragically bound to the starless midnight of racism and war that the bright daybreak of peace and brotherhood can never become a reality. I refuse to accept the cynical notion that nation after nation must spiral down a military stairway into the hell of thermonuclear destruction. I believe that unarmed truth and unconditional love will have the final word in reality, end quote. We affirm Dr. King's words and wish for the city of Columbia to work for a world without nuclear weapons. And as the state of state government, Columbia, South Carolina can lead the way out of nuclear war. Thank you again for considering our request and leading the way for peace. You make me very proud to work for peace together as part of the, our Columbia, South Carolina family. And now is the time to be vigilant and oppose the production of new nuclear weapons components at SRS. Thank you. Well, before both of you leave, I just want to make a quick statement to say that uh, it's amazing to see the interconnectedness of all the different issues we discuss even today, the issues of, 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 of equity and inclusion, racial justice, and if in fact the mm -hmm. world, uh, the world including this, uh, this great country in which we live, I listen to the Society of Friends uh, in the 17th century and, and throughout uh, the most challenging uh, 100 years of the uh, the birth of this country, we'd be in a very different place. Uh, so 
Uh, um, I appreciate your continued and consistent leadership, uh, always on the right side of history. So God bless you. All right. Madam, um, Madam Clerk, uh, do we have any other callers? And if uh, not, um, we I think we have some audio uh, um, or recorded uh, messages that we need to take up before we go to executive session. Yes, sir. All right. So I'll play the first message into the record. Hi, my name is Lai Chikowski. I play tennis at the Columbia Tennis Center on Whaley Street. It has been closed since the pandemic. It has been shown that the tennis is one of the safe sports to engage in during this time. There is a group of seniors that plays there, at, uh, well, two different groups, which total a combined total of about 60 individuals. We're all over the age of 60. We are now playing in other places that are not as safe because they do not have clay courts. Also, there's no shade available. We need to have the center open. The Lori Center is open. Bars are open. There's no reason for the tennis center not to be open. Of all the people I play tennis with, not a single one of them are ill. And that's because we do try to engage in regular exercise, even though the city is making it extremely difficult. All of our seniors are very upset by this. I hope that you guys open this uh, tennis center as quickly as possible. Thank you. Okay. And one more, Erica, and two more. Yeah, two more. Here's the second one. Greetings, Mayor Benjamin and all city council men and women. My name is Pastor Ibashiba Nick. I'm from Columbia, South Carolina. I am a member and activist of the Richmond County Black Collective. And my message is to request that Richmond County Black Collective will be added to your agenda on August the 4th. And that is for Richmond County Black Collective to be added to um, the meeting or the agenda on August the 4th. Um, also, we have all, we have emailed, the you guys have received the email with our agenda um, request and ask that you guys um, respectfully read over it and it will be discussed on today. Thank you very much for your time. Have a good day. All right. Okay. The final message. Hey, uh, my name is Andrew Hudson. My address is 3205 Lincoln Street here in Columbia. Uh, I've called into other city council meetings before. I apologize, I couldn't uh, stay online until you got to public comment. I have to run back to my day job. Um, wanted to echo, uh, I know there's other callers who are able to stay on the line and are presenting again a series of uh, requested policy changes related to policing. Um, the short message I would suggest uh, to city council is the, the amendments that were made previously to the use of force uh, policy, I believe it's called, are, are not sufficient for what we're talking about. What we're actually looking for really is covered by this idea of defunding the police. We actually want to reduce the amount of money, material, and equipment that goes in. There are a number of specific suggestions uh, in this policy document about how to do that, and a number of groups uh, throughout the Midlands and Columbia have made these suggestions to you. There are things like banning the use of tear gas and other weapons of war, uh, not allowing uh, our local police and sheriff's departments to purchase uh, armored vehicles and other surplus military hardware, requiring them to give up the military hardware they already have, um, and generally to reorient our approach to public safety uh, around one uh, that does not favor sending armed officers to resolve every possible situation. Uh, but instead focuses on a community care approach and there are lots of other excellent programs uh, in here uh, in uh, Columbia and in the Midlands, uh, which are more deserving of our support than the Columbia Police Department is. Um, one uh, other just brief note on the, the format of meetings. Um, this is the, the second or third city council meeting I've attended You know, this summer since the, the protests over the death of George Floyd and Breonna Taylor and others have been so much at the forefront of mind. Um, City Council has made a couple of attempts to address these concerns from the community. I appreciate that. I also want to say I very much respect the City Council's uh, taking time to deal with zoning issues and appointments that all of the business of the city is really great. 
uh, we have a chant at protests where we say, this is what democracy looks like. And I always want to say, this isn't actually what democracy, this is, democracy is broken when we're in the streets shouting, democracy should look like uh, a reasonably ordered city council meeting. And I appreciate all of y'all's work on those things. Um, it might be helpful though, when there is so much public interest in matters related to policing and funding uh, of the budget and the police department, um, to make some special time. I don't know if that's a special city council meeting just on these so that there's more space for public comment or if it's scheduling the public comment period of the existing city council meetings to be, you know, at a specific time um, so that folks aren't aren't getting on. This is the second or third time I've gotten on and waited for several hours through, you know, what's great and important business that you absolutely should deal with, but it's not productive uh, for me to sit for two hours on hold to leave a short comment about police funding or for you to spend two hours talking about those things uh, while I'm sitting silently in the, the background. Um, so, you know, we, we could make a better use of each other's time, uh, both public servants and the public themselves, uh, by making a dedicated space for public comment on these specific issues, and whether that's a dedicated part with a time uh, scheduled in advance as part of a city council meeting or a special city council meeting, uh, either way, I think would be helpful and more productive and very much needed since uh, there are a lot of us out here asking to talk about these issues. Okay, right. thank you so much uh, and have a good day. All right. We're, we're um, going to let that one sit right there. Yeah, uh, is any, are there any other um, uh, calls? It looks uh, like Mr. Lurie is still on the line, sir. Okay, uh, please put Dr. Lurie on. And, thank uh, you. Thank you. And that would round out this, this session. All right. Thank you. All right. You're welcome. Thank you, Mr. Mayor and the council members. It's great to be with you all. I'm, I'm glad to see everyone is looking healthy and great. I've been in Columbia resident at 1827 Green Street for the last almost 30 years, but been a resident of Columbia for 44 years. And I'm glad that you all got my email. At least some of us just wanted to bounce back, but I'm going to send it to you again. But I just I'm going to just talk about the Columbia Compass. I just had a document somebody sent to me, a print document, and said, hey, where's the Columbia International Festival in this one? <laughs> and I thought I would take this opportunity to talk to you all. I know I've been in Columbia for 44 years. The city has grown much international and multicultural, multilingual multiracial, it's unbelievable growth we have seen. And I think, you know, for the future of our city, we need to showcase how diverse we are, especially we're looking to the next decades to come and then see how the world and then the country can know how cosmopolitan, how international we are. I think the festival basically showcases that diversity we have, rich diversity we have in our city. And primarily, we just think about the population alone in the city of Columbia. I think we may have as many as 10%. And I'm not kidding about that. Just look at USC, Bennett College, Allen, Columbia International University, Midland Tech. These schools plus K through 12 alone have about easily 3,000 internationals. And then you have many working class business people, healthcare professionals, software guys, and a lot of people. So I think we see that everywhere we go, even the restaurants and hotels. I think you know it should be probably good for the the Columbia Compass to somehow include the international aspect of our city. I know the Greek Festival has been the oldest one. Columbia International Festival has been there for 25 years, and we usually draw about 20,000 20, people representing 160 cultures. So I think, you know, if there's a possibility to include that aspect, that would be great. I want to thank Mayor. I, I know a year ago when you were in New York City, my daughter came to the conference. You were there mm -hmm. and she was at NYU at that time. And then you recognized her name and then you, I'm so glad that, you know, you both connected and I appreciate the comments you made last time, but I was not uh, able to respond to you last time. I want to thank you for, for recognizing her just by the name. So thank you so much. I appreciate all of you. You all did a great job. I listened to the last three hours of the meeting and I was not bored. I enjoyed listening to every part of it because it's part of being a citizen of Colombia. Just listen to what's happening in town also. Thank you for all that you do. And I just want to congratulate you for the wonderful job you are doing. And thank, thank you again. You. Thank you, Raj. You take care. 
All right. All right. Um, I, can we have a motion to go in the executive session? Mr. Duval? you're on mute, Howard. Howard, you're on mute. Howard, you're on mute. No, you really are on mute. Got there it. <laughs> Mr. Mayor, I move to go into executive session for receipt of legal advice related to matters covered by attorney climate privilege pursuant to 30-4-70A2, COVID-19, Business Improvement District Renewal, City Holidays, Street Renamings, uh, discussion of negotiations and to propose contractual arrangement pursuant to 30-4-70A2, Automated Metering Infrastructure Proposed Contract Amendment, Landmark Consulting, Lamar Companies, 207 Gervais Sign, Location, Lease, uh, 2221 Divine Street, Discussion of Employment of Employee, Pursuant to 30-4-78-1, Municipal Court and Development Corporations. Receipt of legal advice related to a pending or threatened potential claim, Pursuant to 30-4-70-A-2, Marcus Davis versus City, Darius Hassel versus City. Thank you. Is there a second? Second. second. With the previous question, clerk, call the roll. Mr. Brennan? Yes. Mr. Rickleman? Keep going. Okay. Mr. Uh, McDowell? Yes. Mr. Duval? Aye. Mr. Vine? Aye. Mr. Davis? Aye. Mayor Benjamin? Aye. Aye. 